Jones. Okay. I don't know what is going on. I'm so sorry about my video, but we can't do that. Welcome everyone to the February meeting of the, I'm Jeanette Kim, I'm not Jesse Back, despite the video issues. Um, I'm Jeanette, I am the new chair of the CB3 SLA committee and helping me out with Zoom facilitation will be Amanda Liu. If you have any technical questions, you can drop them in the Q&A. Um, we are, I'm gonna turn off my video, it's too distracting. Um, what we are going to do, because this is a new format this month that we're running in a webinar format, as opposed to a plain meeting format in Zoom, it means that we have to physically unmute you in order to speak. So we will be in control of that. We are also going to cut down public community member speaking time to 90 seconds per. We have quite a few agenda items tonight, so hopefully everyone can make their points a bit more concisely. Um, and the way it's going to go for every single item, I'll read out a bit of the application, all the main points. I will ask the applicants if they have anything they'd like to clarify or add. I will then allow the committee to ask questions and field their answers from the applicants. Then we will go to public session for that application. Then we will move back to committee and the committee will decide what to do next. So that will be the order of operations for the entirety of the meeting. So please respect that order as we go. Um, tonight, the first one we're going to start with is the application for reception bar. And I'm gonna drop the um, questionnaire in the chat in a second. Here we go. How do I drop in the chat? Do we have the applicants for reception bar present? If you are, can you please raise your hand? I'm gonna lower all attendees' hands for a second. Can you raise your hand if you are part of the application? Joe, I believe you're the attorney for them. So thank you for joining. Yes, and I have Katie here with me as well. Hello. Great. Okay, here is the hit list on the application for Stanton Street 112. This is located between Ludlow and Essex on Stanton. Um, it's meant to be a bar tavern with a full kitchen and a food prep area. They're looking to expand their hours and I'm gonna ask the applicants to clarify this in a second. I'm sorry, we we're on Orchard Street. Oh, pardon me, looking at the wrong one. Already off to a hot start. <laughs> chair day one good time okay i believe this is just for the extension of hours um to include monday and as well this is for 167 orchard street between stanton and rivington um expansion of orchard. sorry i'm sorry 45 orchard street between hester and grand between hester and grand oh this is number 16. i will get it right eventually <laughs> let me send out the right questionnaire thank you Okay, cool. Mm. All right, so this is for a cocktail bar and they're looking for wine and beer. They're looking to extend their hours to Monday, which they currently don't. They also ask for midnight every night which is not something we normally do as a CB in general. Um, they're trying to expand to also include private parties and events during the year, which I don't believe was a part of their previous stipulations. Um, but otherwise, this is an already operating restaurant that's already operating as a cocktail bar. They have hours Tuesdays through Sundays as it stands, and they're here to expand their hours to Monday. What other color would you like to add? So the only the only things I'll say about this, and you, and you had it just about right, uh, we'd like to add Monday hours. Currently, we're closed on Mondays. We'd like to operate on Mondays, 5 p.m. through 12 a.m. And we're also looking to install some earlier hours on Saturday and Sunday. So instead of being open 5 till um, midnight on Sunday and 5 till 2 a.m. on Saturday, which we currently are, we would like to have a starting time at 2 p.m., so we can activate a little bit earlier in the day on Saturdays and Sundays. 
Got it. Yeah. Sounds good. Committee, did anyone have any questions for the applicants? Oh, and this is a beer and wine application, just so you know, it's a beer and wine license, rather. Correct, correct. And the only reason that this wasn't just administratively approved was because? The outdoor seating. Um, we were engaged in the DOT program um, early on, and we we're operating our outdoor seating till midnight, seven days. And from what we understood from the board office, in order to do this as an administrative approval, we would have had to agree to shut down the outdoors during the week at 10 p.m., um, which was not something that we were able to do. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Pause. I've already messed up a million things. I need to call attendance first. And also that's to um, approve last month's minutes as well. Correct, David? No. Okay. I'm going to call roll. I'm just going to go in the order I see on the screen. Is Mandalu present? Jesse Beck? Yep. David Crane? Here. Jamie Felber? Present. Sarah Bachu? Present. And Jeanette Kim present and voting as well. Thank you. Sorry for that. Um, Joe, thank you for that context. Um, to just provide context to the rest of the gang here, we as a CB do not. All of our stipulations, if there is outdoor space, we usually shut it by 10. DOT has their own regulations that say you can stay up until 12 based on like the open restaurants that wasn't stated during COVID, 12 being midnight. And so for us, we would not typically write a resolution that would go past the hours of 10. And this application is coming forward because they would like it till midnight. And that is why it's not just an administrative approval given that they're beer and wine. Does that make sense to all the people on the committee? Great, thank you for the nods. Okay, any questions from the committee for the applicant? Cool, we will now move this to the public session for this application. Um, Joe, I'm gonna, Joseph, excuse me, I'm gonna lower your hand. If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hands and we will have you speak in the order that they pop up for us and you'll have 90 seconds um, precisely. If you could also mention if you, you don't have to give your direct address, but if you could mention like where you live in proximity, um, your context with why you're concerned about this application, that would be very helpful. The chair recognizes David to speak for 90 seconds. Hello, Mon. Uh, hello, do you hear me? Yes, we do. I don't know if you realize this, but the chat is disabled. I, I just wondered if it was That's actually appropriate because we don't have chat during these meetings ever. If you have technical questions, please refer to the Q&A. It's at the bottom bar of your, um, your Zoom screen. Do you have any comments you'd like to make on this application? Okay, yes. I live at the corner of Stanton and Ludlow, and I'm absolutely opposed to the the uh the furtherance of nightlife is already beyond belief here it, it uh the disturbance of our peace is already extreme it's during the week it's weekends it's any time at all uh so i'm <laughs> i'm definitely opposed to more hours for a business that serves drinks or weed or any of these things going on out here. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who'd like to speak on this matter? Hearing none, we're gonna move this back to committee. Um, committee. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I think the biggest, oh, David, you're recognized. Yeah, uh, earlier Jeanette said we don't typically approve outdoor use after 10 p.m. Uh, we never have. We've never approved it, I believe. We've never approved it anywhere for after 10 p.m. And uh, I don't think we're gonna set precedent doing that now. So I'd, I'd really like the applicant to um, to scale that back. Would you here's here's the rub with that, David, is that we can ask them, but technically they can go to they can probably just go to SLA and get the midnight that they're asking for, especially because it's beer wine. 
Oh, they can they can ask. I know, but we could also say that we certainly. Don't. Oh, yes, I bet. I bet. I mean, I don't know that we have an experience with an applicant going against the board on this, but I think we would win at 10 p.m. Uh, unless someone with more experience has seen a case otherwise. What does the applicant say to keeping outdoor space open on only until 10 p.m.? If if that was a scenario that could work for us, we would have done this at an administrative approval and not wasted everybody's time tonight. Um, unfortunately, it's a small space. It's been operating in good standing for five years, beer and wine license, and the DOT program, although it's not going to be the permanent program until the city decides on a new one, it will be in full force and effect. And we've been operating till midnight. And uh, it's been my experience with the State Liquor Authority that we are going to be governed by the municipality's rules in that regard, unless we agree to stipulations with the community board to the contrary, which is why we're here, because it's a it's a hardship for us to do that. Okay, so I'll just clarify that the whether you agree or not, the stipulations can be imposed by the SLA at our request. Yes, of course. Obviously, it's easier if you agree, but you don't have to agree with us for that to happen. Of course, the state liquor authority can choose to um, restrict our outdoor space in the way that you request that they do, uh, or they can allow us to operate the way we have been. They have the right to do either. I'm just I'm just giving you a little bit of you know my experience with the beer and wine applicant with with a clean history of what I've seen. That's all. Committee, I think our goal might be to write the steps and like leave them at 10 p.m. and then the applicant would not sign. Or we can just deny their application outright and they would just do this. Here's my thing is the end result is going to be the same, is that they're probably going to get the approval that they want from the SLA. So it's just a matter of how are we phrasing that. We can either put it at 10 p.m. and they don't sign their stipulations because they don't agree to them. We go to full board and we deny. They end up going to SLA and still getting it. I, I mean, see I, do that. I see we hmm. give it to the, oh, I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, if 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 we end up at full board and they and we deny what we say is we deny because they would not sign these stipulations, um, and then the SLA can look at them, and typically they have picked up those stipulations or a version that's very close. So let's say just the worst case, I believe, would be they don't pick up this one stipulation, but they picked up all of the rest if they won't if they won't agree to it. Um, I, they're not going to not uh, use, you know, they won't reject all of our steps because we put out this one, which we have always been consistent on. And this is a block which has a problem. Uh, this is a heavy, heavily residential block with a lot of, uh, of night -like, night life activity. The SLA does understand that. Um, and I, I'm almost sure that they will back us up. Anyway, I'm just asking committee, let's do it that way. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I'll take like a quick straw poll. Is anyone going to be opposed to like the steps as the draft resolution has been written, which I'll have reviewed, stating that the outdoor space needs to be closed at 10 p.m.? We all understand that the applicant is not going to agree to that at this time, but that's the way that we're going to write the resolution. Any confusion or disagreements there from the committee? Um, I, I don't disagree. I'm happy, but I just want a point of clarification, David. Did you say that this specific block has a history of nightlife problems well it's it's becoming more like the blocks above i mean this is roughly okay a I, yeah so, yeah it's becoming clear. bad down on lower on lower orchard too um, well, yeah no no no. yeah that's fine i was just wondering for this specific it's block it's not the okay. worst but oh my goodness <laughs> the, the tier below the worst is really bad okay no, okay, I understand. So I wanted to clarify which specific block you were talking about and we're for what it's worth we're the only f and b operator on our block can you give the Wi-Fi tower out for like? Okay. I agree. That's why I would not be against the whole program. I just want us not to do the 10 p.m. Uh, further than 10 p.m. outdoors. Okay. I agree. I'm going to go over the steps now. I did not fill out the PDF ahead of time. What I will say is we have written the resolution and they will be mirrored in the PDF. If that's okay, that if we review the resolution together. I can't remember how Michelle did it, but we're we're gonna I'm gonna share screen. We're gonna do it. We're gonna go live. Screen one. Here we go. Um. 
Oh, I did need one clarifying question on the number of seats at the bar. Applicant, if you may. Yeah, there's 10. 10 seats around the bar. Okay, and then let's make sure we got these hours that you're applying for correct. You're looking for 5 p.m. to midnight, Monday through Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Thursday to Friday, 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Saturday, and 2 p.m. to midnight on Sunday. Correct. Okay, that's what's mirrored here, which is good enough. Okay. So here are the steps that we are going to send out. Obviously, we've discussed this 10 p.m. here. Okay, so this is going to operate as a Korean restaurant and bar with food being prepared in a food prep area served at all hours. The hours are that which I just outlined, which mm -hmm. I will keep for the sake of brevity. Um, it'll close all outdoor dining by 10 p.m. It'll have a closed fixed facade. That'll all close by 10 p.m. Ambient background music only. Um, there I'll take that one out. Not apply for any alteration in its method of operation for any physical alter alterations without appearing before the board first. It will not host pub crawls, party buses, not have unlimited drink specials with food. It will not have happy hours. It will ensure that there are no weight lounge outside and it will designate an employee for ensuring no loitering. It will conspicuously post a stipulation form outside beside its liquor license and it will provide a telephone number for its residents, which I believe was in the application. Does that all sound good to the applicant? I mean, with the exception of the outdoor closing time at 10 p.m., yes. Excellent, great. I will now call this resolution to, uh, David has a point, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just, <clears throat> it's just a question about, <clears throat> all right, generally the applicant needs to be here. We didn't ask any questions that required it really, but the well, applicant- the applicant's here, she's with me. It, would it be appropriate, uh, Chair, would it be appropriate for us to ask them to, uh, can't think of the word, not the opposite of unmute, to unvideo, or to, you know, to, to turn video on so we can actually see the applicant? I don't think we can. I would love to, unmute. but we don't have that capability. Okay, I understand. But um, anyway, it's just a little, it doesn't feel like, whatever, it's Zoom. It doesn't feel like- Let's bring that up Got it. closer earlier in the session next time. Thanks, David. I think we're to go with the resolution as is. David, what's the appropriate way to call this resolution to question? Oh, you just do it. Just start the vote. If there's no okay. more debate, go the vote. All right. Um, I'm taking the vote. Uh, David? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. This resolution passes. Applicant, we will be sending you the stipulations. If you don't intend on signing, please also let the office know accordingly. And thank you for appearing before the board. Okay, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks for taking us first. Appreciate it. Thank Much you. appreciated. Take care. Okay. The next one we're going to review, we might as well do, actually, I'm gonna go for an easier one. Thanks for everyone's patience, by the way, much appreciated. Actually, they're all. All right, we're just gonna go back to item number five. And that will be the thy team, thy team, 108 Stanton, are the applicants present? Hello. I just want like vocal confirmation that they're present and with us. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so uh, much for joining. Uh, yes. Uh, this is Jen Du from Michael Floyd Inc. Uh, representing the Thine Team Inc. And uh, I think um, uh, the president shown in should be here, and the Vice President Tan Huang should be here. Are okay. they? Would they like to speak during the meeting as well? Should we? 
Uh, no, they are they're just attending uh, the meeting, and okay. um, I'm going to do the speech. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Okay, um, so this oh, is... I'm, I'm going to go over the application a bit first, oh, okay. and then if we have any questions, we'll ask you for follow-up. Got it. Sounds good. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yes, Actually, David? Could we bring them in then to the this part of the meeting, just since they are present, in case? Was that, John, was that Ting Wong and Tim? Yeah, Tang Wong. Okay. So we, we looped them in. Thanks, David, for doing that. Okay, so this application is seeking a full on-premise liquor license for the location at 108 Stanton. That's between Houston and Ludlow. It's for a place for 40 people, 13 tables, 20 seats with a stand-up bar about five feet. They're gonna be serving cafe food. It looks like light fare based on the menu. There are 39 on-premise liquor license in a 500 foot radius bar our count. This used to be the old El Sombrero. Their license expired in uh, September, 2022. Um, there were 16 commercial 311 complaints at this location with NYPD action necessary since 2018. Um, there were 36 residents who wrote emails to CB3 in opposition to this application citing saturation in the neighborhood. And there were 21 residents who live within two blocks who signed the petition in favor of this application. Um, maybe you can tell us very briefly about what your plan is for operations here. Yes, uh, there are about uh, 30, over 30 uh, on-premises liquor license on the, uh, within a 500 foot, uh, a foot uh, radius. Um, probably about uh, six, um, Tavern and a bar, but all of them they have either uh, music or DJ. But the applicant is looking for creative, very quiet on uh, the uh, indoor um, the places. Uh, we don't have any TV. We only play the soft, uh, very soft uh, background music, and there's no outdoor like uh, no any promote, no any free charge things. And we're gonna have the um, uh, security on Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday from uh, 6 to 12 to make sure everything um, is in good order. And um, uh, the kitchen will be closed. Uh, the business hour will be from um, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. And the kitchen and uh, the sales will stop half an hour um, before closing. Tuesday will be closed. So the basically the differences with our uh, business is totally different than any other. We're very, very quiet and um, there's no any, you know, and, and, which, and the creation of uh, or, or kind of a cocktail. Got it. I think our main concern, a little bit confusing about the hours. Can you just confirm that you're looking to open at 8 a.m.? Oh, no, uh, no, they, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, now, the, the applicant is considered because of the very high rent, and they try to, to see whether they can generate like more avenues or more revenues for selling the coffee from a.m. to 5 p.m., only through the window. But that's just their hesitation whether they will do this or not only uh, sell the coffee, not any other. The kitchen will not be open. And this only through the one windows from this hours. So that's the only thing, but they are still, you know, to, 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 to think whether they're going to do this. Got it. But the, the, coffee only. Would be, the bar business would be in the evening from five. Yes. Yeah, so like a five to 2 a.m. Okay. The previous business, they open to 4 a.m., but they, they think, uh, you know, it's kind of late. So they'd rather choose that a little bit early early hours. Um, anyone on the committee have any questions? Please raise your hand. John, I'm just gonna lower your hand because we know you're here. David, go ahead. Yeah, so so this, what was there before? It was El Sombrero a while back, but that's yeah. no longer operating. But, but now, if recently, it's been nothing. It, it's being uh, renovated right now, and that could have been this previous business they closed um, end of the last year. 
because of COVID, they cannot survive. All right, but they had a 4 a.m. license and you're looking Yes, at- they have a 4 a.m. And they also, I believe they have an outdoor even, but the current, uh, the new applicant, they're not looking for those. They, they just are looking for the very peace and indoor and uh, quiet, the places for the patron after they long over, they can sit down, you know, to have a peace, quiet the time. No TV, no DJ, yes. Um, one clarifying question I had, it, it looks like you, Jian, you hold a liquor license in Queens. Is that like a... Oh, yes. Yeah. So the one of the applicant, he opened the... Uh, yeah, he has experience. He has a business open in Flushing, Queens, the similar. And both... Actually, the vice president also has a restaurant in um, in Manhattan. So they are quite familiar with the, how to manage the business. Okay. Doesn't look like committee has any questions. If there is anyone from the public who'd like to speak on this application, that's item number five, 108 Stanton, please raise your hand and we'll recognize you in the order that we see you. Please remember to mention what your context is, if you live nearby, what your concern is, and you'll each have 90 seconds. If you're a part of a group, only one person from the group needs to speak. Um, that should be sufficient in making the point. So David, you are recognized to speak for 90 seconds. Uh, hello. Um, yes, I'm Caddy Corner from this establishment. Um, I'm speaking as an individual, though I'm also with LES Dwellers. But the point is that we already have so much noise here, carrying on, uh, drinking in the streets, vomiting, etc. from pianos. I'm very disinclined to see anything even remotely comparable appearing across the street. Uh, the woman who spoke earlier would like to assure us that she only intends, they only intend to be open at some earlier point in the day and close, but this is just the beginning. This is the way all these things start. I no longer feel any trust toward these people who are seeking to make money at what this area is becoming, which is a place to make money off people who want to come here, get drunk, carouse, do anything almost that they want. It's uh, even, even without all the crime going on, it's just terrifically annoying to live here. Though I've lived here for two decades and uh, have not had to deal with anything like this uh, until these recent years with all these applications and the explosion. You can wrap up your statement, please. Thank you. And the explosion that has been allowed uh, seemingly by the board and the SLA. Thank you. Um, the chair now recognizes DM to speak. DM is speaking, honey. DM, you may go ahead. You have 90 seconds. There's some erroneous information that was just provided. Um, your own stipulations and your own institutional history should know that this was a 2 a.m. licensed place. They tried to upgrade to 4 a.m. in which Committee Board 3 denied. That's in the second page of the presentation to you. Um, in fact, there were actually 49 letters. You may, may or not count them within, um, I think 47 of them were within a block radius, most of them around the establishment itself above across Caddy Corner. Um, on its face, this should be denied. It is applied with its 30-day notice to the SLA, not as a bona fide restaurant, which was there before, a restaurant that was there for years and years. Unser Brewer was a restaurant, El Fedora after it was a restaurant. This is applied as a bar and tavern with a limited menu. There is no way we can assure you, we've been reading the 500 foot hearing cases in our neighborhood, that this would be approved. A bar outright would be denied. There are too many bars, too many nightlife um, components here. There is no way this is a this reaches any public benefit threshold. Um, so uh, on its face, it should be not denied. I mean, there is there is no denying how bad this area is. That particular corner on Stanton and Orchard has to have cops stationed there in order to try to control it, and they cannot control it. Go to any precinct meeting, and they will tell you that they cannot control that corner. It is unacceptable to have a bar replace a restaurant. This is not 
there's this does not meet the public benefit threshold. It should be denied outright. We need a restaurant that closes at midnight there. That would be fair. All right. Uh, thank you. Okay, David Travelman, you are now recognized to speak. I think I'm on now. Yes. Okay. Um, following up on Jim's comments, I live about a block and a half away from this location. And I've had meetings with uh, Captain Barcia, who was previously the seventh precinct uh, commanding officer. And he always had difficulty finding office, police officers to fill in between two and 4 a.m. And then our problems, of course, go into this neighborhood until 6 a.m. And that was an area of time that he didn't even discuss as to whether he could get officers into the area then. We have more and more noise here on Orchard, Ludlow, and Stanton Streets. It's really gotten incredible. Um, for a restaurant that's going to be only 40 people, that sounds like a modest size, but I'm very concerned about the light food fare and what ultimately this could become because there's a corner spot and it has a lot of window presence, a lot of facade. And if somebody has stipulations they choose to ignore, which we see happening all the time down here, it's big, big problems for the community. Um, thank you very much. I'm sorry our time is so limited on these. Thank you very much. The chair now uh, recognizes Rainer Keller. Yes, hello. Hello, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, living on Essex Street, just around the corner from um, Stanton Street. And I too am opposed to this and the other uh, venues for a liquor licenses because um, I would, I would uh, say this place does not have a community a value for the community and this um the corner as previous speaker said is problematic the whole block is problematic with noise and trash and uh yeah i'm just opposed to all these licenses we don't need any more bars thank you Thank you, Rainer. We will now recognize Arit to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Oh, I have an echo, sorry. Um, so I'm opposed to this license. I've lived around the corner from this venue for 25 years now. Uh, we've seen the detrimental impact on our community from the high volume of bars and it's enough. Uh, we've had enough. We want to have a different neighborhood. We need your support. We need other retail diversity that will provide benefit to the community that is not here because of the increase in liquor licenses. We see sneaker shops. I would love a woman's shoe shop. I would love a kitchen supply shop that's not for restaurants. I would love to see community spaces for activists, for teachers, for students, for um for elderly, for, for other members in the community. I would love language classes in my neighborhood. I mean, I can go on and on, and I'm sure everybody on this call who's a community member could submit ideas, but as long as you continue to approve liquor licenses, we will not achieve retail diversity, which means our neighborhood will be swamped with drunks and continue to be unlivable. So please help us out here. It's for your benefit too, if you're representing this community. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your, your comments. Comment. If there are no other members of the public, I see Patrick Walsh, you are now recognized to speak for 90 seconds. Hi, I live on the corner of Stanton and Ludlow which I would argue is probably or possibly the most unlivable corner in New York City at this point. Every single night we are woken by drunks. 
every single night we are making 311 complaints. It is grotesque. What you have done with your subservience to these bars is created a crime zone, a crime zone. I am tired of my daughter not being able to sleep, of my wife not being able to sleep. It is unconscionable to even consider a bar in that location. It has zero benefit to this community. It, it is just an additional insult to, to us. We work, we live here, we're human beings and we deserve to be treated as such. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. If there are no other members of the public who'd like to speak on this, Okay, it looks like we're back at committee. Um, um, can I can I say something? Very briefly, if you'd like to address some of the comments from the public. Okay. But this, sure that yeah, this is I, not a yeah, debate, I, but let's try not to, yeah, just okay. simply. I understand everybody's concern, but as I mentioned, uh, there are about the five to six uh, bar and Italian in this whole block. It's not as, uh, yeah, there are like about a 30, 39 uh, um, on-premises liquor license, but the majority, their hotel, their restaurant, and their open late some restaurant, they have their bar. But this one, as I mentioned, is the only bar is in this neighborhood. And the people can can come in in this way. A lot of people, sometimes you go to the restaurant, you have to pay the money <clears throat> to be sit. So this restaurant, or this this bar only can provide the patron, and even the neighbor they can come to here peace quietly. I totally understand. And look at the how many uh, store they empty on the block because I do the uh, on on the street, and then uh, uh, the, the the previous uh, opinion, uh, previous business they lost it. They cannot survive because uh, you know what's going on had passed. So this applicant, they're trying to get in, they understand that everybody's concerned. That's why they don't want to continue open the bar. Like usually there's a lot of a crowded, a lot of a, like music and outdoor and a sidewalk block the people, but this is very quiet. And the people, they can sit there. They can, uh, too peaceful. And so I, you know, that's just my point. And then, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's just my point. They're trying to uh, help, and I understand the people uh, that said, okay, any other business can come in, but I think it would be nice for the applicant. They're trying to help the a lot of the homeowner, the building owner. They survive. They 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 cannot even to survive enough for for, for this. And I'd be I I think it would be nice for this only. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, only one right. in this neighborhood is peace, quiet, and very unique. A quiet bar. It's not like what everybody thinking about loud. I'm finished. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, committee. What do we think about? What do we think about? Any comments? Any questions? Any thoughts? Prayers. David. I mean. Oh, sorry. David had his hand. Jamie, you'll be next. No, David, go for it. Okay. Uh, this is the worst block. Um, if there's any possibility that the SLA will follow us, if we say to deny it, we should just flat out denial explaining why. Um, on these blocks, it gets so bad that the police department has to shut them down to control traffic on the weekends. You know, it's, it's just really bad. Um, this is a 2 a.m. closing. It's going to contribute. Um, you know, to, to whatever degree, it's not going to make it better. Um, it's very tricky for us to decide whether the SLA will follow suit because they're not clear about what they're doing. I mean, to be clear, they are the ones causing this problem. Although I, I, you know, I share the frustration that I was hearing earlier. Um, the SLA, all right, there was not that long of a gap before the previous license. Okay, Don't I guess- Think of that. My question then to you, David, like more directly, is your issue with this application then that it's a saturated area and that we could point to our guidance to say we do not support? Correct. Okay. Thank you for your sharing that. Jamie?
Hello? Yep. Yeah, my mute was stuck. Go ahead. At first, I was going to say that it's a reduction in hours, but um, I don't remember if it was, if a sombrero was 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. prior to this. I believe we... it was 4 a.m. Well, not by our resolution that we passed. So, let me, uh, you, you know, we, we have an establishment that's looking to operate by a reduction of hours, which seems like it would be something that we would like to control. But there's nothing there at the moment. I mean, that that's that was the heart of my problem. My my doubt is, Look, is this previously licensed or is it not? I don't really think that right here, right now is the time to get into a debate about the use of empty storefronts and the beneficial, you know, and whether or not an empty storefront benefits the neighborhood more than a bar or restaurant. I don't think this is the time or place to get into it. Um, I just think that if an applicant is coming, either we like, we know that another applicant will come after this for the same location and might ask for something more egregious. So do we not want to just try to limit our hours? That's my thought. That's my question. Would this committee be interested in a reduction of, okay, here's the problem with reducing the hours and stuff is if they were already operating before, and I'm going to verify this now, but I thought they had the full OP until 4 a.m. And so the likelihood of SLA, if they were to grant the applicant the license to not give the same kind of stipulations, like I think we have, I think the only control we have is like the stipulations that we're gonna write now. So I would suggest that we come up with stipulations that work for us as a committee, rather than to your point, like kind of like talk about like, what do we think of the values there? I. That's my take, David. I see your point that like maybe we shouldn't approve this altogether. I think my take is that because it's been licensed as an OP and it only expired last September, I'm not sure that it's like that. It's not like a really old spot that's been unlicensed for a really long time. It's been a restaurant. It's probably always likely to be a restaurant. I think it'll be very challenging for us to not to block that application there. So. Um, anyone else have any thoughts on that matter? Me? Um, if someone else wants to go before I spoke, but if it was midnight, I'd say, I'd say, let's approve it. I want us to deny it. Um, and if the SLA overrules us and does something horrible, it is completely on them. But I know that the dwellers and their allies are going to be there at that 500 foot hearing. There are 38 licenses within 500 feet. That is a lot. Um, they know about the problems in the area. There is not a current license there. Um, I don't want to call this rolling the dice, uh, but I want us to deny it. Um, I am pretty sure that the SLA I will do the right thing. And if they don't, well, I don't want to get crude. But okay. you know so your position's clear. Sorry, David. I just want to understood. I'm with you. I hear what you're saying. I guess, what do the other committee members, I guess I'm taking a straw poll. How do the other members feel about the application as it stands with its two hours? Amanda, go ahead. Um, I'm willing to discuss early closure to midnight. Okay, I feel amenable to that. I know David's amenable to that. I see Jesse slightly nodding. Um, I would do, yeah, this area is, is, I mean, everything we just heard and everything David said is correct. I think 12 a.m. and we we haven't heard that. I think it was Dia mentioned that that was even, a, you know, a, a reasonable expectation for the hours. So I would be good with the midnight and I would probably not be good with anything else. Got it. Um, can, may I ask the applicant if they would be willing to change their hours to be closing at midnight? Okay. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> okay, what about uh, can we uh, change it to one, change it to 1 a.m. And then uh, because kitchen will be closed, uh, I would say before one. So it's, it's really, um, like I mentioned, it's really quiet. It's totally different than the previous like this is a long-term 
like uh, half an hour, we kind of uh, close the kitchen and we kind of stop selling because they open at 5 p.m. So if you close at 12, like uh, how many hours? And the people, they need to survive. They need to survive. Understood, but our, our concern yeah. is that this is this happens to be a very saturated I, neighborhood. Yeah, I so totally I, I hear you. Yes. The, their counter offer is 1 a.m. I'm looking at I'm looking at the faces of the committee members here to see. David's still a no. Amanda, go ahead. I'll comment. I, I just think what we don't want is another club that turns into a dance floor sort of situation, right? Um I think I, I understand rent is high from a business perspective, but I I think I stand pretty firm on the to midnight time. Um yeah, I think that's just my perspective. Jamie. Um I understand the argument that it is difficult to make money. Um I don't think that in a city like New York, uh 1 a.m. is egregious. That is my stance on that. Okay, Jesse and Sarah, you can nod or if, whatever you're comfortable with, but I guess I'm trying to figure out if we want to amend this resolution to 1 a.m. Um, I'm open to 1 a.m. I'd like to hear, I guess, functionally what the difference is for David and Amanda between 1 a.m. and midnight, just so I can understand the logic. It's 1 just for consistency, we, 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 we've we always used midnight as the, if it's midnight, it's not burdensome. Anything beyond that is creating a burden and it'd be more than we give others in these circumstances. It, it is the block. It is precisely that they are <laughs> within a block of that intersection elsewhere. Jamie, go ahead. Uh, again, like, we give the midnight the fear that I think is valid. They close because it doesn't work for them. We do this whole dance again with an operator that wants to come in and ask for 4 a.m. and goes to the community, to the SLA. Like our only role that we can possibly maintain here to have any positive effect for the committee, for the, for the community is to agree and get them to agree to hours that would work with us. Otherwise they go to SLA and you roll the dice, like like David said. So yeah. you're saying you're in favor of I'm in favor of I'm in favor of a 1 a.m. application. It's reduction of hours significantly to where we were. If it was 4 a.m. significantly, if it was 2 a.m. moderately, and it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with what Jamie's saying. Just I think also on the basis of like for me, the license didn't expire too long ago. So um, it's not like other applications we see where it, you know, hasn't been licensed before, or it's been much longer um, since it's been licensed. So I do think it's a net positive to get a business in there that is not open till 4 a.m., um, which I agree that, it, you know, in that neighborhood is, is not needed uh, at this point, um, especially with what the residents are saying. I think then, then we can proceed with I'm going to move to amend the resolution to 1 a.m. Or do I have to move it? Or Well, we could just, we could vote on which one you want to do. You know, yeah. Okay. Time. So we're going to vote on changing the hours to, yes, I'm David. Just counter that the idea that, that uh, this is our last chance to get something that's less burdensome is, I don't think that's true. Um, for instance, if we do midnight and let's say they don't succeed there, and then we have to go through this again, that, that's going to drive the rents down, and I do think that it is appropriate to to you know talk about that as a as a dynamic um, in this neighborhood and others. The rents are super high because you can make a lot of money running a liquor establishment. We don't know that, David. I mean, David, I we're not we're not we're not going for that building. Make... Like, okay, you... order, order, order. Decor, yeah, the... please. I think all the points have been made. I think we know where the positions land. So I think what my move now is to vote on changing this to 1 a.m. instead of 4 a.m. all. Um, we could we could be more creative and ask for like 12 a.m. on certain nights and 1 a.m. on the weekends, if that would like be a bit of a compromise to get the people who are on the other side along. Uh, yeah, you wanna do Tuesday, Wednesday, 
midnight, I, I don't know, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Did midnight, we Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Also yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, they close Tuesday. Yeah, they're closed on Tuesdays. Not like any other business, you know, they open the seven days. So this one, they, they open, you know, it's only six days. Well, then let me post to you, applicant, would you be amenable to midnight from for Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then 1 a.m. for Friday, Saturday? I'm oh, sorry. Friday and Saturday would be the only days for 1 a.m., and the other days would be midnight. Process wise, where are we? What are okay? Talking with them, I see. From Friday, Friday, Saturday, and the Sunday, we do 1 a.m. I'm, I'm, I think I'm good with that. And then midnight, other nights, yes, because it's only two, and the Tuesday we close. So you'd, you'd have Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at midnight. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 1 a.m. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at gotcha. 1 a.m. Yes. Okay, so it sounds like the applicant would agree to that. Committee, are we okay with that move? Uh, 12 a.m., three nights a week, and then 1 a.m. the weekend nights. I'm good. Got it. Okay. It looks, okay. David's, I believe, the only no. Saw is David, but. Okay, let's go ahead and review the stipulations as written then. I'm gonna share my screen. Applicants, if you could please direct your attention. I'm gonna kind of check these off as I go. Um, these are the principles and you guys are looking to, sorry, let me turn off my video. Thy Team Inc. at 108 Stanton, you're running a cafe bar and you're going for the full liquor, wine and beer center license. You'll have less than a full kitchen. You'll open no later than 8 a.m. all day. By the way, are you comfortable like opening every day by 8 a.m.? Because it means you must open by 8 a.m. You said it later, yeah. you can always open earlier. But if you said um, it every day, every day that, you must open Yeah, that one, um, we're not sure. Like I mentioned before, um, the only, at the moment, they only want to open the 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to sell the coffee. But um yeah, so that's fine. Like what that. we just need yes. is an hour that you can commit to being open by. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what time would that be? <sighs> Have applicant, this is a separate hour than the license than the liquor license. Your business operating hours, or I should say your these these open hours and the hours on your license are two different numbers. Make sense? Yes. All right, um, I'm communicating with the applicant right now. And the more so, um, hours you have, the more clear it is that you're not running a bar. Um, Give me one second, I'm sorry. That's fine, thank you. 你那个咖啡你是几点钟开始卖? OK. 所以那那些就是yes or no? OK. 所以你就不卖咖啡了,对吧? This is it's totally different hour. You have to, 你, 你, 你一定要很明确的,yes or no? OK. Okay, so every day is five. So time next stimulation, you tell me about. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that they changed their mind. They were not open as a coffee time, like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. I think they are, uh, they, they did that. They just uh, straight out at 5 p.m. Okay. Yeah. That is how the application presented earlier, that the alcohol service would only begin at 5 a.m. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, not like a material they're not sure right now. Yes, because again, I mentioned about they trying to collect the, like an hour to collect the rent because it's extremely. Yeah. I, yeah. I totally understand. That's totally okay. fine. We just, we just need it for the stipulation. So Surely. I'm going to start from the top again. 
Those are the names of the principals. They are representing Thigh Team Inc. at 108 Stan Street. It's for a full liquor, wine, liquor, wine, and beer. They're going to operate a full bar with less than a full service kitchen, but serving food during all hours operation. Will not mm -hmm. use outdoor space for commercial use. You will employ a doorman, security personnel on weekends. Yes, on a weekend. On we, can, we can just say weekends. You will close any front or rear facade doors and windows at 10 p.m. every night or when Amplified Sound is playing. Yes. Um, this also includes your coffee window. That's like part of the window situation. That would be right. Better. You will only play ambient recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration of the method of operation for any physical alterations without. No, only like we put, yeah. I will, you will not seek a change in class to a full on-premises liquor license without first obtaining approval from CB3, not participating in pub crawls or have party buses come to the establishment. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches with food, no happy hours, no wait lines outside, and you will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds outside. You can post stipulations besides your liquor license and residents may contact the manager owner at the number provided below. Right. Does that all look correct to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. We will be sending you these stipulations. Please sign at your earliest convenience. If uh, you don't intend on signing them, please also let us know at your earliest convenience. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've knocked out two. We have a lot more to go. I would caution the committee and the public that the longer we all talk, the longer we all stay. So uh, let's move on to the next one. We're going to move on to 112 Stanton Street. I already posted that we in the chat. Vote. Do we need a vote? Oh, shit. Oh, pardon my French. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so we're going to call this resolution to a vote with the stipulations as described. Amanda? Yes. Jesse? Yes. David? No. Sarah. Yes. Jamie. Jamie Felber. Okay, well, he will abstain or he might be able to rejoin his vote later. And Jeanette, my vote is yes. Thank you, committee, for that. If he doesn't vote, he's not abstaining, he's absent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks, David. Okay, we are now moving on to. Number six, 112 Stanton Street, posting the questionnaire in the chat for everyone to see. Do we have the applicants of 112 Stanton Street here? Please raise your hand. Nidia, I believe you're the representation. Thank you so much. And look at this well. Hi, Nadia Shah Jahan. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, the applicant is also here and can join if available, Lurkin Shannon, as needed, but I'll, I'll be doing the talking, but he's available for the committee for any questions and the public. Sounds good. Thank you so much for joining. Let me reorient myself here. Okay, this application is for um, OP for an experiential dining and cocktail bar with a full kitchen serving food at all hours. They're looking to stay open till 2 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday and open till 4 a.m. Thursday through Saturday with their opening hours starting at 3 p.m. They don't plan on having outdoor space um, at this location. Previously, it had a wine and beer license serving Sunday to Saturday, 11 a.m. to midnight. It was previously licensed to uh, another company, AJ Hospitality, for wine and beer since 2015. So it's been licensed for a very long time. The principal holds uh, full OP licenses on the Upper East Side in Kipps Bay and Wolfhound in Astoria. Um, there were, have been zero commercial 301 complaints at this location since 2018. There were 36 residents who wrote emails to CB3 in opposition to this application, citing saturation in the neighborhood and the principal not abiding by their stipulations at their other restaurants, which I will ask the applicant to address in a second. And then we also received 15 residents who live within two blocks of location signing in favor. Does that all sound correct? Yes, um, and I do want to address, um, I can address the violations first at uh, the, um, the Wolfhound, and there were two incidents 
that occurred. The Wolfhound in Astoria is one of the applicants uh, licensed um, on-premise licenses. It's been licensed since 2016. It's still an active license. There have been two violations in the past seven years. Both have been resolved uh, and fines have been paid. And they were also kind of unique situations. The first, uh, the most recent one was during COVID, um, the summer of COVID in about June, 2021, uh, or sorry, 2020, the summer of 2020. So basically when everything was happening and restaurants we're trying to uh, address the changing regulations. The violation was for a small crowd outside in the street and open container. Um, the bar did what they could do to control the situation, but it was occurring outside of the, the street and um, the staff managed it, but they, you know, they, and, and they, they paid the fine, you know, they addressed the violation. And then the other violation was for a late open about five years ago. So like back in February, 2018, the Wolfhound is a, a traditional kind of modern Irish bar. And so they have an annual tra Irish traditional week where musicians fly in, famous musicians fly in from Ireland. Um, and there had been a funeral or a wake. And I don't know if you're aware of Irish traditions, but um, funerals have a very, um, just very strong kind of tradition behind them. And so the bar was open late, later than open hours. And again, they paid the fine. Um, but that is uh, all in all, I think over the 13 years, I believe that uh, these premises, the three on premises license have been uh, licensed for the applicant. There are um, those two violations. There's no violations at the Upper East Side location. Uh, and there's no SLA violations with the uh, Kips Bay location. So that's kind of my comment on the violations side of it. Happy to discuss more as needed. Um, and then I also wanna address what the community has been saying and also the um, re residents and tenants of, about the oversaturation. Uh, and because this is a cocktail bar, it's kind of in between, it's not, it's not, the concept is not meant to be like a, a bar tavern, but it's not a full restaurant either. It's supposed to be a dining. The concept is trying to be a dining experience with cocktail service to kind of complement the both. Um, and they have uh, the business part, uh, you know, they're bringing on uh, business uh, resumes that were included in the application of, you know, award-winning mixologist um, who has been involved in uh, bars worldwide. Um, you know, in, in terms of the cocktails that he's creating, as well as a professional executive chef who they will be working together and kind of curating this dining experience. Um, and again, just addressing the concerns of the community, we are willing to work, you know, we applied for the 4am, uh, you know, opening just because that's what the SLA, uh, you know, provide, that's what we're allowed to apply for, but we want to work with the community and are happy to take, you know, 12, uh, AM for, you know, Monday through Wednesday and uh, 1 AM for Thursday through uh, Sunday. So willing, we want to, the applicant is willing to work with the community board and the residents on kind of reducing that. It's 1 AM just to increase, it's a seated reservation situation. It's not just going to be like anybody, you know, at this time can walk in, it's going to be like an experience. So you want to have, you know, seats available. It's not just like a walk in, walk out kind of place. So that 1 a.m. opening is really just to increase a seating reservation to, again, you know, everybody's, the, the other businesses have mentioned this, it is expensive okay. to rent um, in that area. Are we, sometimes we add stipulations where we ask the applicant to include tax reservations as part of their reservation system. Would that be something mm -hmm. that they'll be amenable to. Okay. We might throw that in there and that might make us okay. more comfortable with the sure. hours. I will sure. now turn to the committee and see if they have any questions for the applicant. David, go ahead. So those fines and violations you spoke about, that's one thing, but don't you have stipulations at the, at the Wolfgang site to not have things like DJs and dance parties and karaoke nights? The Wolfhound has uh, live music, Irish traditional music, and they have they have music uh, on their. They don't have stipulations, but that's on their license. On Instagram, you're promoting things like parties, DJ parties. I mean, it's it's just yeah. Just uh, on, on the, sorry, sorry, I just, just want to the the, the, the applicant can answer that. David, let's let the them answer you. Yes, go ahead, Lurkin. Just on that, David. Um, the Wolfhounds are traditional Irish music pub. It's very, very different. Couldn't be any further removed from the Izakaya that we're suggesting on the Lower East Side. It'll be seating only. And with regards to Wolfhound, it is a busy pub, but I think it is a great asset to the community. Even the 
the Queen's Chamber of Commerce have offered to support this application because we have a great relationship with them. Um, but I, I can't stress enough that a traditional Irish pub in Queen and a, is a Kaya with a two Michelin star chef on the Lower East Side. It would be a very different situation. And, and like Nadia said, we're willing to work with you on any stipulations you want to add. And I'm a Lower East Side resident myself. I appreciate all the complaints and all the issues here. And what we're doing is nothing like the other bars you're, you're talking about that cause problems. And we're not in the position to be punitive here, right? We're an advisory council. I think what we would advise you to do is make sure that um, you are abiding by your stipulations at your other locations. We have not seen any other complaints through um, right. that have okay. required action otherwise. So I, I, yes, they're relevant, but- um, Can I follow up? Yes, sure. They're not following their steps. They're not. The, the whole month, the whole week of April, they, they were having, you know, really, they were putting this on their Instagram. Um, you know, it was one of the nights, sort of at random. Uh, unfortunately, I have to have a very large font for me to, be able to read it anymore. Friday is going to be wild. Emo night karaoke and all emo night of karaoke with a live band. This is not traditional Irish music. My point is they are not following their stipulations at other locations. And we just need to be wary of that, that this operator may not follow stipulations at this location. Um, and so we should be careful like uh, earlier you. hours to prevent uh, the type of problem that will result. Got it. If they and as mentioned, oh, sorry, David. Let's wait. And, and, sorry, sorry, I just want a <laughs> bit of order okay. here. I'm going to recognize people to speak as we go. So I will now let the applicant address David's comments, but yeah. If you'd sorry. like, I know you've yes. already addressed them, so. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it, as as I mentioned, we are cognizant of the Lower East Side oversaturation of, of the bars um, and OP licenses in the area. And this is not what we're trying to, you know, promote. We don't want people standing, like being drunk on the neighborhood in the block. You know, we want to create kind of, a, you know, the, the bar concept is kind of to create a Zen oasis in the middle of all this crazy. Um, so, you know, that's what we're hoping to promote. Uh, and we want to work with the, with, and, and, you know, and we want, we encourage tenants to reach out to the bar managers and owners, and we will address their complaints. You know, that's something that we're open to and we want to engage in the neighborhood. Gotcha. Um, can you clarify something from your application? I, I think Sure. I didn't see a certificate, a certificate of occupancy or letter of no objection. Do you have that hmm. here? I, uh, I believe I can, I can forward that onto you. There was, uh, I didn't think there was because I thought it was a, a 1910, uh, you know, building, but I did get one forwarded me from, from the applicant and I will find that and forward that onto you. I think it might've come while I was on vacation. So I apologize for that. Um, do you want um, me to do it now or? Uh, you could get to us promptly before the end of the evening. That would be very helpful. I should I just who should I send it to? Can you, you can send just, it to it, the the CB? Th oh, and I'll post the email here in the chat. That's CB. great. Yeah, I I just I'm trying to find it. I have it. Then I yeah. Nice. What we need to include is the you know the the capacity, the tables, mm -hmm. and the number of seats, sure. and things like that. So if you could just I'll post my email in the chat in a bit. All right. Any other questions from committee? Seeing none, we're gonna to move to the public. Please remember that you have 90 seconds. Amanda's kind of gonna wave a flag at 15 and I will cut you off at 90. Um, please again, state your proximity or context as to why you are interested in this application. Okay, DM, you're the first, go ahead. Um, on its face, this is a beer and wine license. There were no complaints because it was a restaurant that closed at 10 p.m. This is a beer and wine license you're about to upgrade. This is not the way you're supposed to do it. This even, it flies in the face of your own, your own resolutions at your own community board. This is, an un, this is a wine and beer, never before licensed liquor space. For five years, it had no complaints because it closed at 10 p.m. for a real restaurant. You gave it wine and beer because it signed stipulations till 12 a.m. This applicant has agreed that it would walk away from this if it is not given an OP. It, it says that very clearly in its stipulation and its um, application. This is a high risk impact operator. This should be on its face a no. You should not be negotiating with him without hearing from the public or really reading what the actual facts are of that premises. It has never been a liquor premises. It's beer and wine. That is very important fact that has been overlooked and not discussed by the committee chair. 
this should be a no. They are breaking their stipulations. We're talking to SLA. We're very confused. We're waiting for the SLA to weigh in on this because we find it very odd that it's promoting all the things that it's not allowed to do. So either you're going to give us a bad operator that says he'll come in at one and then a year come at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. until we have another nightclub. We have tons of Izayakis around this neighborhood. There's one on every corner around him, one on one on um, Essex, one on Ludlow. We already have that kind of business. This is a an upgrade of a license that should not be approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next to speak will be Arit. Hi, can you hear me? Um, yeah, I live around the corner. Again, I'm opposed to this license. Uh, honestly, all the restaurants in this neighborhood, if you look at any of them, Mr. Taka, Contra, Wild Air, on and on, none of them have 12 a.m. closings. None of them have 4 a.m. closings. They have 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock closings. That's a reasonable time for a restaurant. If they're proposing anything more, it's a dupe. We know it, we've lived it, we've experienced it. Um, it's unclear why you as a committee, who you think these places are benefiting. Uh, you know, I hear you speak about this, you know, net positive, net positive for who? It's not benefiting the community. We have enough bars. So who are you speaking about? How do you think you're impacting the people's lives? You hear from Patrick who lives just kitty corner, whose life is being ruined by these venues. And he's the only one brave enough to show up at these meetings every single day. Again, who are you doing this for? It's unbelievable to see humans treating other humans in this way. And it's unbelievable that you're closing and shutting down our voice and not allowing us to see each other as community members. This is how authoritarian regimes start. Closing democratic space. It's unbelievable. I see your smirks. Maybe you should go off camera too. You think I'm joking. Okay, okay thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, we'll now be moving on to Rainer Keller. You are now at speak for 90 seconds. Yes, hello, can you? Yep. Um, I'm also opposed to this space. Uh, if we want to send Oasis, we would have a, a, a spa or something like that. But a uh, restaurant, uh, air quotes, restaurant uh, experience, dining, uh, is just a uh, 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 I don't know a shield for uh, turning it into a bar, and uh, it's just unbelievable what you guys are doing here. Uh, I have I'm speechless about this event here tonight. Uh, I just want to state that I'm opposed to this license, and uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The chair now recognizes Patrick Walsh to speak. Okay. Yeah, I do. I'm just I'm trying to figure out how to follow. Nadia, Nadia I'm going to mute you in the meantime. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Um, I am, again, about 40 yards from this would-be establishment, uh, which I vehemently oppose um, for the reasons that the prior two speakers so eloquently put it. I would like to add that the, the mere fact there are 39 bars within 500 feet. Do you not understand what this means? You're intelligent people. You, you have been given an opportunity to, to affect this community in a positive way, and you just throw it away. This operator has a dubious past, a dubious, uh, the, the, the language, just, just like the, the, the other woman talking about a quiet bar. There's no such thing as a quiet bar in the Lower East Side or a Zen oasis. This is contemptible. This is contemptible. 
you are merely adding to drunk land. I don't know what your motives are. I don't know what you think you're doing, but you are destroying the lives of people in this community. And be that on your heads. Thank you. If we can refrain from, let's say, attacking the committee members, we are volunteers and we are all trying to do our best. The chair now recognizes David Troutman to speak for 90 seconds. Hi, David Troutman. I live a block and a half away from this proposed establishment. I'm in complete agreement with uh, David Crane that when you see uh, violations of stipulations in the past, they're not they're not going to behave any better in the new place. I think that's a huge red flag, and this liquor license application should be denied. There's just so many problems in this neighborhood, and it just goes on and on and on. Um, bait and switch is a huge problem that we have in the community with somebody promising one thing, and a couple of months later, we find out there's something completely different. So please deny this application and quit destroying people's lives. Thank you for joining, David. You, David Missionis, you're now you're now recognized to speak. Uh, hello. It's hard for me to add anything to the uh, to the eloquence of my neighbors. Uh, my thanks goes out to every one of them. I also live forty yards away from this establishment, Patrick, across the street, same building. Um. I've, I echo everything that has been said uh, completely and wholeheartedly, uh, even if it makes um, Amanda Liu laugh, apparently. I, I don't care. You don't understand what That it's is not like. an order to personally call out. Okay, very sorry. I'll, I'll just say this. It's, it is very difficult living here and having any peace in our lives when yet another bar is proposed. We, uh, uh, I heard about retail diversity earlier. Um, how about a Petco or a PetSmart? Many of us would love not to have to walk all the way to Union Square for that. Uh, there are all sorts of businesses that would serve the, I mean, there was a huge amount of people who rent space here and live here um, and we do not need another bar. We do not need another reason for people to drive by with incredibly loud stereos and roll slowly because people in the restaurants will see them. People in the bars will see them and react. There's also that, by the way. There's not just the bars, but it's the style of just mad loudness that persists at this corner. It's incredibly, I'd invite any of you to try just being here. Come by, come by my place, if you like. Give me a thank call. You. Thank um, you very much. Yes, okay, thank I appreciate you. appreciate your thoughts. Okay, and if we can please refrain from, let's let's hold some decorum. We are all volunteers here. We're all volunteer at time. So if we could just be as polite as possible, that'd be great. It looks like we have no other members of the public looking to speak on this application committee. Let's uh, actually, I'll give the applicants 90 seconds to respond if there's anything that they want to directly respond to, or we can just move on to the committee discussion. I mean, again, we are trying to work with the community board and addressing the late hours. Uh, we are willing to move our late hours down from what the SLA would probably, you know, uh, approve. Um, and uh, the you know, principal of LS Invest is actually an immigration attorney who is very well respected in his field. Um, and, you know, he has other businesses that because he's interested in, in investing in New York City and he's made the Lower East Side his home now. So, you know, attacking the principal of the LS Invest is it's a little much, but, you know, we, we want to contribute to the neighborhood and we look forward to hopefully being a part of the community. Let us all avoid the repartee of going back and forth at people specifically. Let's talk about the application. Let's talk about the merits of it or the demerits of it. Committee, I now ask, what is our feeling? I will say that initially I am not really keen on 4 a.m. They sound like they're amenable to lessening their hours as well. David, go ahead. 
yeah, there's not a, a full liquor license there. Uh, we should we should follow our guidelines here, uh, which are for exactly this situation. Um, there is no doubt that the SLA will not grant a, a full liquor license if we say do not do that for all the reasons that we um, have, have been doing it in this area. There's there's no liquor license there now. So there's no risk that a liquor license will be created if we say no. So let's do that. Mm, I'm going to fact check that right quick. Does anyone else on the committee want to speak? Uh, I know, Jeanette, this is not following your instructions, so feel free to cut me off, but I just did want to clarify for all the community members that every single one of us lives in this community, uh, and so we all do deal with the same challenges that folks bring up, and that's why we volunteer our time here. Thank you for that, Sarah. Okay, I'm just checking right now because I had it that it is currently licensed. It's just vacant which means it's inactive or it's not a beer wine. Huh? It is currently licensed as beer wine. And so since it's beer wine, they will. Oh, I'm sorry. It's inactive. It's inactive at the moment. Okay. Inactive. But since it was beer wine, uh, 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 granting a liquor license is, uh, well, DM to use the word upgrade, but technically upgrade is used for other things. So I don't want to, this is not an upgrade. All right, I'm confused. But it's not a technical upgrade, but it, but Ask, it is active. Sarah, if you want to just pause until David's done speaking, please. Okay. David. But it but it is currently, or you know, it has been beer wine, and so jumping up to uh, to full liquor is something that uh, we have we have um, a whole lot of influence with the SLA at this particular location. If we say no. Okay, Sarah, go ahead. Uh, come back to me one sec. Okay, it is a new liquor license for the record. It is not an upgrade. It is vaguely an upgrade in the sense that it was previously licensed inactively right now as a wine beer. The new tenant is looking to get a full on premise. It seems like this committee prefers earlier hours. So I would like to present the suggestion to the applicant first, and then I'll check if the committee is okay with that. If we shorten the hours to 2 a.m. on the weekends and midnight on the weekdays instead, that's aligned with kind of what we've been saying about midnight, it curtails a little bit. Um, what does the applicant think about that? Sure, so could you just confirm which days that would be? It would be midnight Sunday through Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday through Saturday. Sure, yes, the applicant is okay with that. Sounds good. Committee, are we amenable to that set of hours? Jesse, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm on with, uh, I agree with David on this, where if we are opening it up, it's basically a new liquor license that we are adding to the community. And, you know, I am for, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't think that adding in an OP, a full OP is something that I can, I could support. Sounds good. Thank you, Jesse. Sarah and Amanda have anything? I just wanted to clarify that it has an active license for beer wine. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, okay. It seems that the balance of this committee is not in favor of this application. I I guess like my question for the applicant is why not start at wine and beer at this location? Because the trouble here is that it's an OP and that for us is, is the challenging part. Lorcan, you can go ahead and respond to that question. Yeah, so the whole concept, so just to give you a little background, I'm an immigration attorney. I deal with all sorts of immigrants, but I often deal with extraordinary ability immigrants. So this mixologist came to me and He's from Cyprus. He works in one of the top 50 bars in the world. And his concept just can't work without liquor. He's a mixologist. But to give you some background, when he came to me with his proposal, the idea is two drinks per person, seating room only. I feel like we're very far removed from what you, you're seeing on the Lower East Side. But yeah, without that, we, we can't. We can't proceed. And we do love this space. You know, we love this area. Uh, I live in the area, like I said. Um, 
So we'll just be back to the drawing board if this is the case, if we can't move forward, which would be, I, I do genuinely believe it would be a loss to the neighborhood. I, okay. I think we're bringing something a lot better than what's there in a lot of cases, like too much on Star Chef, who's opening his first establishment, a guy opening his own bar, who is the bartending equivalent of a Michelin star chef. And we're aiming to do it at reasonable prices. I mean, I come from the West of Ireland. We didn't grow up with a lot of money. I want things to be affordable and accessible. Lorcan, um, I appreciate the context, but I, 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 yeah. I hear you. I get you. Sorry. We're, it's Sorry no problem. I was going anyway. Um, so I know where Jesse and David stand, Amanda and Sarah, where you stand. If I can put you on a spot, apologies. Um, so just to confirm, David, you're saying no because the area is oversaturated and it's a previously unlike uh, licensed uh, location. Is that your reasoning, David? Correct. Um, I'm thinking. I don't know, Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. Sorry, I'm going to ask both of you to think faster. We have like seven more to go through. Mm. I'm leaning towards no, I guess. Um, just given. Okay. It looks like the majority of this committee is not in favor of this application, which means we would deny it outright without stipulations. The applicant would be welcome to go to the SLA and do as they please. Um, David, the procedure here is that the resolution, like we don't have to go through the steps, right? Because we're not doing any of the steps. Right, but there wouldn't be steps. So we do have, and I, can someone pull up the resolution that we typically do in these circumstances or one that we've Certainly, done? Certainly, I, I can pull it up. I'm just, I'm okay. just making yeah, sure. No, we would just go with the resolution. Um, you know, the whereas clauses at the top explaining are probably the same. And then instead of steps and so forth, it would be a whereas is about our guidance about the uh, the situation that the SLA knows, we describe that and that we deny it. Anyway, if you have that uh, language, let's get it up here. Yep, well, all the resolutions are available to you, David, at all times, as they were sent before the meeting. They were sent- uh, the I know, but do we have one that's yep, about- we do now and we will review it, but I will ask- Well, what about, the, what about the one about the, the denial for the reasons? Do we have one of those to cobble into it? Okay, well, let's just go over the, are we looking at the correct screen? Yes, okay. Uh, oh, my video is so irritating, okay. Um, okay, this resolution deny, to deny this resolution, it's to deny the application for Ellis Invest at 112 Stan Street. They will later on provide the certificate of occupancy, Nadia. If you would still provide that at a later time, that'd be great. Um, there are 38 full on-premises liquor licenses within 500 feet per the SLA lamp map. Location is currently licensed to serve only beer and wine since November 2021. It was previously licensed before that. Um, we've already discussed that Lorcan has been a license holder to other places, including some of the violations that have been sustained there. Um, we talk a little bit more about the application, zero commercial 301 complaints. Whereas there were 36 residents who wrote emails to CB3 in opposition to this um, application setting saturation in the neighborhood, given the, uh, yes, and I believe Sarah is amending the- right, I'm editing it, uh, maybe scroll up for that part. Until I okay. <laughs> okay, and then, and then the language will now read that based on the CB3 SLA committee guidance that we have put out about saturated areas, Therefore, we deny this application um, on that basis. And I will give Sarah a couple more seconds to get the language in so that we can vote on that precisely. So in the in the first whereas we've used we've got the word upgrade in there. Upgrade technically happens when it's the same. No, nope, correct. It's incorrect. We just yep. said thanks. Thank you. Okay. I think it's good, no. Okay, therefore be it resolved that community board three recommends denial of the application for a full on-premises liquor license for Allison, uh, for the premises located at 112 Sand Street because the location is previously, in, mm, that's not the case. Oh, um, as an OP. And there are already three um, in a 
in this interesting separated area. I, okay, I think what David's looking for is the language that we've used before. I there's language we've used before. I okay, great. You can find it between. I copied it from one from last. Okay, meeting. great. Okay, so I'm now going to call this resolution to a vote because there's. But just one moment. There, we will add maybe at the full board a whereas which discusses the guidance because we pull language into it from that. We have in the past. David, if you could suggest that language now while we're doing the resolution, that would be very. I don't very remember what it is, but if we is have. It, why don't you process. search for it? That's what I did. I think Jeanette's just asking for assistance with searching for it. Because when I search for it, yeah. I so searched like guidance and this is what I got. Okay. okay, well, uh, we can amend it at full board, but we'll add it there. I don't want to waste the full board's time. Let's do it now. Okay. I'm just going to call the age card and say I'm 60 years old. I'm going to try to do this. Don't you work okay. in like tech or computers, David? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I'm Let's... a production engineer. Yeah, I do site reliability engineering. I don't do nitty gritty. Okay, so let's, let's remember we're being here. recorded. So let's just keep the germane comments on. And then otherwise, if someone can find that language for me, we can paste it in and then we can vote on. I think I I think I found it. One second. Thank you to everyone for their patience in this. Training. I was I was self-deprecating on myself there. So I think it was allowed. Uh, uh, the chair does not allow that at this time. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sarah, for making those amendments. I'm going to re read the revised. Therefore, be it resolved that Community Board 3 recommends the denial of the application for this uh, LS Invest LLC at 112 Stanton because location is previously unless there's a note. It, has, can oh, I, oh, oh um, we, added, we added the clause. Yes. And please note for the public record, whereas Community Board 3 adopted guidance in September 2021 that will not generally support full on-premises liquor license applications in previously unlicensed locations subject to the 500 foot rule that do not show public interest. That is linked. That is now part of the resolution. David, are you going to try and amend this at full board? No, no, no. You've got what I needed. Thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. I am now calling this resolution to a vote. David. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Jesse. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Jeanette. Yes. This resolution passes. Thank you, applicants, for coming through. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. okay, we are going to move on to the next item on the agenda, which is number seven, and I will post the questionnaire. Oh, we already, did we already do seven? <clears throat> this is for smashed. It's like a smash burger joint, 167 Orchard Street. If the applicants are present, can you please raise your hand and we can add you to speaking. <clears throat> okay. Are Gretchen and Wilmer part of the operation as well? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Phil, are Gretchen and Wilmer also part of the application? Uh, yeah, Gretchen and Wilmer and Mark as well. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to lower all your hands. Thank you all for joining us. Wonderful. Thank Once again, I'm going to read a bit. We're going to let the applicant confirm, and then we're going to let the committee ask questions. Then we'll move to public. Then we'll move back to committee. That is how we'll go. Sorry. Okay, this is for the application at 167 Orchard Street for Smash Burger. This is a burger joint seeking a full on-premise liquor license. This is at between Stanton and Rivington. Um, there are 41 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet per the SLA lamp map. This location is currently licensed and has been licensed since 2015. Um, the applicant is a license holder at um, in Brooklyn since 2022 and has no previous SLA violations. There were, again, 36 residents who wrote emails to CB3 in opposition, citing saturation in the area. And there were zero commercial complaints in this location since 2018. This is previously Mother Duck, and it is currently vacant, but I believe still licensed. Does that all sound correct? 
correct? That does. I just would like to add a few more words if that's all right. If we can do it in two minutes, I'll, sure. give you I'll go quick. Um, Thank you very much. First, I just want to welcome you. Um, it's nice to have a new chair. It's nice to meet you. My name is Phil Dorn. I'm an attorney with Pizzetsky and Bookman. With me, who you just mentioned, are Mark Mandaros and Gretchen Smith, the owner and operator of Smash, uh, which many of you may recognize from the burger place right down the block. Uh, the team is looking to move their restaurant just a few doors down and expand on their successful business that's been in place for a couple of years now. Um, as some of you may know, their current location has no indoor dining component. It's simply a to-go window. Uh, now they'll be taking over the former Mother Duck and Pizza Beach space uh, to add an indoor dining for what will be a family-friendly neighborhood burger restaurant. Uh, they've built a large and loyal customer base, many of which often ask whether they'll expand to a sit-down restaurant, and now it's that time for them. Um, I just want to say that the team had originally asked for 4 a.m. Um, due to their current business, uh, the business is structure as a late night hub for food. It's open till three. Uh, however, after hearing the many concerns of the neighbors and out of desire to continue to be a good neighbor in this neighborhood, um, they're happy to reduce those hours to just 2 a.m. on weekends. Um, this is, um, like I said, this is earlier than their, their current space, which stays open till three. Um, I, one last thing I want to mention is the original application um, had security personnel on there, but we removed that. That was just uh, some confusion. There won't be any state certified bouncer or anything like that out front. It's not that type of place at all. No velvet rope, et cetera. Just a staff person out there to make sure if there is a line uh, that the noise is, is mitigated. But uh, with the indoor component, they, they don't anticipate a line whatsoever. Um, and that I'll, I'll turn it back over to the committee. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, committee, does anyone have questions for the applicant? Okay, looks like we don't have any questions for them. I will just note that in the questionnaire, it didn't look like you had the, the ensure that there are no wait lines checked, but we will probably be asking for that to take place. We, we can we can do that. Excellent, excellent. And I think that's what you just described as yeah. your intentions. And then can you um, clarify, I don't know if I saw certificate of occupancy, just what what's the capacity of the restaurant? Um, let me see if I have it really quickly that I can pull up. Um, the, the number of seats is 129. Um, it might be a slightly larger C of O than that. Um, I don't have it on my files. I would have to, it's in my office. Got it. It says there's a pending TCO. So okay, it's pending. I think I will, I will probably just write that in to the resolution. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. It seems like the committee does not have any questions as of yet. I will note that like what Phil is saying is they sent in a revised application with different hours and that's the hours that we're going to discuss. Um, and those revisions should be no later than 2 a.m. any of the nights. Okay, we are moving on to the public now. DM Boyd, I see your hand first. You are now recognized for 90 seconds. Um, I'm a little alarmed that people don't know the history of their own resolutions at the community board. Um, historical knowledge is key to the situation. This has been turned over to finally get a reduction by Mother Duck to close at 1 a.m. to have that OP license there and 12 a.m. and all other nights because it was one of the most problematic uh, businesses on that corner for many years. Pizza Beach had a revision in order to get its approval. It was not allowed to use the basement so it could not be a club. Not one mention of this committee has talked about the history of these spaces and the resolutions on how we've gotten there. And it's very, very alarming to me that no one's reading it. No one discussed on this committee that they mark DJs, that they want third party promoters and cover fees, all of these things that were marked down that makes you that's very alarming smashed again no one talked about their existing business it has no liquor license or beer or wine it is a takeout window that is in violation of its outdoor space with dot which has been asked to remove it it has violations that are very present if you look at dot so i'm a little concerned that there's not a real overview of all of these businesses in the context of the past as well as what is presently going on as far as a rest as, as burgers go we have tons of burgers. Shake Shack is coming. We have Bear Burger next door. This is not a public benefit. If they want to, you know, if they want to keep the same business model that they're really popular, they don't even need the beer, wine, or liquor. They're doing so well. 
So if that's what they're saying. So again, I'm alarmed that no one is seeing that the reason that this was approved was because Mother yeah. Duck had to deny unless a deny unless you should read your own resolutions. Okay, thank under, you. I will caution once again that we would like to take a tone of decorum. Okay. We now recognize Iri to speak. Irit, you have yeah, nine. Hi, yeah. Um, similar to other applicants, we have restaurants in the neighborhood. Most restaurants close well before midnight. Saigon Social, just kitty corner to this space, closes, I believe, at 11 p.m., 10 p.m. all nights. There's no reason that a restaurant needs to stay open late. There is no reason. There's no reason they need full liquor license. If they're really wanting to serve the community with food, they'll close early like all the other restaurants, Saigon Social, Mr. Taka, restaurants up and down the block close at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. at the latest. Please oppose this. Thank you. And thank you for volunteering your time just as much as we community members have been actively participating in this space for years. Thank you, Yurit. I now recognize Rainer Keller to speak for 90 seconds. Yes, hello again. Uh, I'm opposed to this uh, space because it's on a problematic corner. Uh, opposite is the hair of the dog. The Epstein's is there. And, uh, you know, we have cannabis stores around the corner and next to it. Uh, and the reason maybe um, this place doesn't have any complaints since 2080 because it was closed for half that time. Uh, again, uh, I'm opposed to this place. Thank you. Uh, sorry, thank you, um, Rainer, for speaking. Patrick Walsh, Patrick Walsh. Walsh. for 90 seconds. Uh, hello again. Um, I'm opposed to this place for the simple reason is we don't need another burger joint, that much the more, one that is requiring a full liquor license. Uh, it is, as uh, a previous speaker spoke, across from the hair of the dog, which is a constant problem. Um, and it would add to that problem. There's no way around it. So please deny this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. It looks like we do not have anyone else from the public to speak. So we'll return this to committee. Phil, do you want 90 seconds to respond to anything? I would love that. Thank you. 90 um, seconds, two, please. Two quickly. Uh, one, I just want to say that we do not have any outstanding DOT violations. So that was right. a clear statement. Uh, I also would like to say that we are not the previous tenants. We have no relation to, Her to uh, Pizza Beach or to Mother Duck. So we've built a ton of rapport in this neighborhood as current uh, neighbors. We would hope that we'd be given the benefit of the doubt. Um, I'd also like to say that there was a mistake in the packet. There are no third party promoters for this space. Um, when, they, when they saw promoting, they meant simply self promoting on their own social media. This will not be a club. This is a burger place. You know this operator, he's been in place for, for a while now. Um, so that's not the brand, this is Smash Burger. Um, and the last comment about not having a need for another burger joint, uh, we're moving down the block. So it won't be the addition of another since our current location will be closing. It's just moving down the block. Okay, thank you. And I'm so sorry, David Troutman, I did not realize your hand was up. Um, please, you have 90 seconds to speak. Okay, thank you. Um, so this place used to be Pizza Beach. Pizza Beach was horrible. They could never keep their windows closed. They violated their stipulations routinely. They had DJs. And I know this guy is saying that he's, his business is not going to be like that, but he's got DJs listed on his application. I'm just really, really nervous that something like Pizza Beach is coming back. Did I understand correctly that this place does not currently have any type of alcohol beverage control license? That seems really scary to me if that's true that 
such a large space with such huge window openings uh, would suddenly be given a place that has a full OP. He has a full OP in Brooklyn. Uh, Phil, please don't speak out of turn. Thank you. Anything after midnight in this neighborhood is a complete disaster. And one final comment, the, um, the applicant states that he knows of two liquor licenses on the block on his questionnaire. Uh, it gives me real concern that he doesn't know how serious the problems are in this neighborhood because there are four of the absolute worst offenders within 25 steps of that location. And there are actually eight ABC license on that teeny little block and there are only five buildings on that block this this is this is pretty outrageous that uh, the community be stuffed with something like this down their throats again please deny this application in full thank you thank you mr troutman okay we return now to committee um sarah has graciously researched that the hours for pig not pig beach for mother duck which i do kind of recall that we gave them up to 1 a.m. They came asking for more and then we couldn't give them more because it's a problem area. So obviously this is adjacent from Hair of the Dog, which has been a problem site. Um, I think a lot of the concern I hear is about the kind of activity going on inside the restaurant. We can certainly stipulate that if there's gonna be a DJ that it's just for like background music. It's not so much like a set that's like promoted. It's not like a DJ spot because a restaurant is well within its right to have someone curate their music in a live format. So if, is that something that's okay? Because I'm looking through the application now, Phil, and I'm not, it, some of the things that are left unchecked are, are giving us a bit of pause. So if we could agree that DJs would only be playing at an ambient level and that otherwise you wouldn't have live music, third party promoted events, any event which a cover fee is charged, no scheduled performances, um, I think that would go a long way for at least my comfort. And I feel like a bit of nodding is happening on the committee as well. So shall I restate my question? Was that too long-winded? Can we just ask if they'll agree to this? Yeah, that's, that's who I'm asking. Sorry, I was muted. I didn't realize. Um, we're certainly amenable to all those things. It's not the type of place we are. It's not a club. Um, in fact, the, the DJing will only, and we're happy to stipulate to this, the DJ will only be taking place downstairs in the cellar, which is soundproof. So it'll be background level music in a soundproof cellar. Uh, it won't be heard from the upstairs. Got it. If you're happy to put that in the steps, I'm happy to write it in the steps. Um, what do we think about the hours committee? This question is directed at committee. David, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the What is the state of the current license? There were two different establishments were discussed. I remember Pizza Beach. I don't remember the duck place. Mother Duck came after Pizza Beach. Mother Duck had like started operating. Then they came to try and extend their hours because they just needed more business. And then it just ended up not working out. So now they're not operational. The space is currently licensed. Um. The space is currently licensed and Mother Duck's hours were closing at 1 a.m. Thursday and Saturday and midnight the other nights. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, I, we should stick to that. The, the fact is the SLA, um, because they're obnoxious, uh, they, they're, they're, I, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be a license there. So if we just give a, a flat out no, which I'm not recommending, if we were to do that, um, there would be literally no stipulations because the SLA is like that. They are jerks. Um, so, uh, Again, I, no uh, no rude attacks, decorum, please. Understood. Um, by the way, David, just to jog your memory, we, we reviewed Mother Duck back in November, 2021. I hear you on the hours. I, I am aligned with David in the sense that if we can get the same hours as we had given Mother Duck, and well, we, should, gonna I'm, agree I'm, to we should insist on the same hours or, or less. We need to scale this back. Um, and okay. this is very okay. likely. David, you've made your point. Thank you. I'm going to suggest that we ask the applicant, applicant, would you be amenable to midnight? And then I'm going to let the committee kind of discuss that. If you would be amenable to shifting to midnight, Sunday to Wednesday, 
and then 1 a.m. Thursday to Saturday, because that is how the previous operation was operating. Midnight is already on our application for Sunday to Wednesday. So we are, yeah. of course, amenable to that. Um, the only reason we ask for 2 a.m. on weekends uh, is because we've built a loyal customer base being open until 3 a.m. Uh, just down the block. And a lot of our customers do come to us from the hours of, of, two to, of 1 to 3. Uh, we've since scaled it back from 3 a.m. to 2 a.m. because we, of course, hear your concerns. But a huge following for us comes in those later hours. And, that, and that's important business for us. And, and it's hard for us to just ditch that business when we know it's there. We're, we, we've been successful in the past year and a half or so. We, we've been good operators. We haven't had issues. We've built a rapport with the community and the community has, has shown their desire for us to grow our business uh, and to then just have to scale yeah. back okay. our hours a lot. Is your other so, restaurant gonna be operational still? Sorry to cut you off, but- No, no, we will okay, be closing so this would be the full location. Time. Okay. Um, Committee members, any thoughts on that? So just to confirm, the applicant does not want to, to change the hours further. I understand you're, you're stating that you already have reduced the hours after consultation with the community, but you're not willing to make any further changes, correct? I mean, our our position is certainly 2 a.m. midnight during the week and 2 a.m. on weekends. It, it, we would like that. If, that's where we stand. Are you will, are, and so you're not willing to adjust to 1 a.m., which is what this committee has previously discussed with you know the, the previous applicant for this space. I mean, if it if it means denial otherwise, then no, we'll we'll we will budge. Um, we could have out a middle ground where, where Thursday is is uh, one instead of two, and then just Friday and Saturdays we keep at two. I think this committee would look favorably upon defaulting to the prior hours. And then there's always the option to come back. If you continue to be good operators, if you continue to keep that corner clean and quiet, even at those late hours, I think that's, that's where our position is. I'm seeing nods from our members as well. So I, I, I would urge, I would, I would gently recommend that that's, that's what we do. All right. Um, I just got the confirmation from, from the applicants they're okay with with it'll be midnight sunday to wednesday and then 1 a.m thursday to saturday got it excellent we appreciate your cooperation and i think that's aligned with what the committee community is asking for as well okay that seems to be the only so so the changes we'd be making are the music and making sure that if it's dj it's still at ambient background music's only no live event, no no live music, no promoted events, no third party promoted events, things of that nature. We'll go over the steps in a second, but these are the changes that we're going to make to the resolution as it was last written. And then now we will also adjust these hours to reflect that we're going to do Sunday to Wednesday midnight, and then Thursday to Saturday one a.m. What's the story with the cellar, Jeanette? The cellar, the basement. You may ask what questions you would like. Well, what 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 what's the story with the basement? Uh, it's just more seating space and, and dining space. There'll be full, there's another kitchen downstairs. There's a, a full restaurant menu. And um, that's where if the, if there is a DJ, which is certainly not every night, that's where it would be. Okay. Uh, what's the, what's the current license situation with the basement? Oh, it's, it's currently licensed um, within the mother duck liquor mm -hmm. license. Okay. So this would not be a change from, I mean, other than the operator in the business. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So it seems like the committee is in accord. I need to transfer this information to this PDF. I apologize. While you're doing that, I would just like to quickly add, um, I hope that the committee can remember this conversation, this productive meeting that we've had tonight. And in a year or so from now, if we do come back asking for an upgrade in hours, uh, we've already put in our time as operators down the block and, and we're being amenable to the concerns of the committee tonight. We hope that uh, you remember this if we do come before you again in a year or so. 
This is all public record. So we hope so. And we do review prior resolutions. As I said, we just looked back at the one for Mother Duck and that's how we knew what the historic flowers were. But right. yes, duly noted, we appreciate your cooperation. Um, are you currently permitted to use the outdoor space? At this location. Um, by outdoor space, do you mean the, the sidewalk? Yeah, sidewalk cafe. Uh, we will be applying for, um, is that right? Well, we, uh, I forget, do we have DOT seating planned? Yes, we do. But that's, that's through the Department of Transportation. So I think my only question like for the committee right now is, wait, don't you need like a per permit to start doing that first? Like, am I gonna approve outdoor if they, okay. Well, it says in accordance to the hours permissible by the open restaurant program. So right. uh, we would we would say 10 PM because we do not. That's we fine. Have, we, yeah. we, we understand that's that standard. Got it. Sorry, thanks everyone for your patience. Our operations will be. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull up the steps now. And they will be in parallel with what's in our resolution. Okay. Um, we're going to go over the stipulations now. So please pay attention applicant and representative. This license for full liquor on premise. It's operating a full service restaurant as a burger restaurant um, with the kitchen serving food during all hours of operation. The hours of operation will be opening no later than noon all days and closing by midnight Sunday to Wednesday and closing by 1 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Keep me honest, committee here. I will close all outdoor dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program and any other subsequent uses by 10 p.m all days and not have any speakers or TV monitors outdoors. I will close any front or rear facade doors and windows at 10 p.m. every night or when amplified sound is playing, including but not limited to DJs live music and live, um, live music and live, but or during unamplified live performance of televised. You will not have live music, promoted events, any event at which a cover fee is charged, scheduled performances, um, you will play ambient recorded background music only. Um, and that I will, I'm gonna add a little bit about DJs in a second. You will not apply for an alteration to the method of operation for any physical alterations of any nature without first coming for CD3. You will not seek a change in class to a full OP liquor license without first obtaining approval from us. You will not participate in pub crawls, party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, boozy brunches with food. You will not have a happy hour. Yes, you checked, you will not have a happy hour um, or drink specials without time, with or without time restrictions. You'll not have weight lines outside. You'll assign a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds outside. You're going to conspicuously post a stipulation form next to your liquor license. Uh, residents may contact the manager owner at the number below. And I have the numbers 2012-658-1887. I'm also going to add here. I will not have DJs other than Does that work for you? I will not have DJs playing at volumes other than ambient background levels. Yeah, that's fine. It you from having DJs, but it allows you to have them as long as they're playing at the right levels. Right. Um, can I just make two or make two points about these steps? One, um, question number two at the top, 
um, is an or statement. It says with a kitchen open during all hours of operation or with a full service, and they're both checked. So it's the first one that should be checked. We'll have a we'll have a full kitchen. So the second one says so, or with less than a full kitchen. I see your I see your thing there, but it's actually the second clause is about all hours of operation, whereas the first one is just about full service restaurant. No, I mean, oh, right. oh, sorry, I didn't see that check. Thank you. Yeah. For that question. Right. And then at the end, um, we do intend to have happy hours um, till a fixed time. Interesting. That was not checked on your application. Oh, that's I see it. Is that a source of contention if it if it ends early just to can I see nods or shaking heads from the committee on whether that's going to be an issue? Shaking heads, please. What? Can you explain the issue? I'm trying to see the, it the on the application. No, it doesn't. It says I will not have you ha have a happy hour. That is checked. He's asking if it'd be an issue if we had a happy hour. Who on this committee minds or doesn't mind? Okay, it looks like no is I don't mind. <laughs> Correct. Okay, grand. Can we set a reasonable hour, Phil, that we would all just agree to and move on? Sure. How's cool. eight o'clock, or is that? I think we usually do seven. Seven. Seven's fine. Seven's great. Okay. So oh, he didn't. It, this wasn't. Have we ever run into this situation before? Is there, do we have precedent we could be consistent with? Um. I mean. If it's I don't know, David. Hour, it's not out. It's it's probably not outrageous, but it is not what was advertised for everybody, uh, the community to see. That is a fair point that the community was unable to address this. <sighs> Phil, 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 Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this in the application? Which page? Page five. And distinctly checked as I will not have a happy hour drink specials with or without time restrictions. And that's where I was pulling from. Yeah. I, it seems like y'all are a bit haphazard about the happy hour anyway. I, I know it's really annoying to come back, but it wasn't checked. It's not what you had presented. It's not what the, the public got to see on the application. It's not what I don't think. I, I don't think I, in, in all my time doing this for multiple years, I've never once heard, um, a complaint about a happy hour or a concern or even a, it's never even come up. I agree. Even... I'm with you. And I, I don't know a lot of people who have issues with it, but. Oh, and we okay. also, we also just, we, we do think we were co cooperative in, in hearing the concerns of committee members to it, we're, we're reducing our hours greatly from where we started. It would, it would help our revenue. I mean, it, it seems so trivial here. David, you're the, the most senior person. I'm just, point, on the I'm just pointing. Well, I'm not. I actually, I'm not the most senior person on the committee. I believe that would be Jesse, uh, or someone else, not me. Oh. But anyway, I'm not insisting on it. I was just pointing it out and asking. I, I've tried to apply the sort of the the principle of like, would this have changed anyone's mind about coming to the meeting? I don't think so. Getting activated, and I tend to think not either. Jesse, do you have anything to add? In in since I've been on, we've it's never been. We've never had a it come up or been an issue when it hasn't or has been checked. It's usually pretty perfunctory. Thank you. As a first time chair, the support is very helpful. Um, Phil, we're, I think we're okay with seven. I'm getting nods from the committee that 7 p.m. is okay. That is what we've done. Hopefully that's-, that's Thank you all. I, I, I really do appreciate that. Next time, Phil, I'm gonna go with the one you checked. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, Deal. do the stipulations look okay to you? Uh, yeah, it looks great. Thank you. Okay. I'm now going to call a vote on the resolution mirroring these stipulations. David? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. This resolution passes. Phil, we will be sending you the stipulations. Please sign at your earliest convenience. If you don't plan on signing, please also let us know. Thank you for coming to our meeting. Thank you so much. And if you feel like running one of my other applications through the gamut. I have I have one more tonight. It hopefully should be really quick if you feel like hearing it back to back. Oh, Phil, Phil, Phil. <laughs> I will be continuing to go in order, but thank you so much. Sorry. I'll, I'll hear you soon. All right. Amanda, if you could help me just remove all those people and then all these hands. We are now moving down the line. Thank you everyone for your patience. I suddenly feel the weight of how long this takes now that it rests on my shoulders. Okay.
We are now moving on to item eight of the agenda. For 207 Second Avenue, are the applicants present? Rajesh, I'm gonna add you. This is Hi, Rajesh, Rajesh. Bhargaj. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else from your team that we need to add to the list? Uh, no, I'm by myself. Excellent, okay. Thank you so much for appearing before us. I'm so sorry to do this, but I do need to take a quick break. So I'll be right back. It looks like everyone needed a break. So that's great. Okay. Um, okay, let's go over. Actually, I'm missing all my board members, committee members. So sorry, Rajesh, give me a second. No problem. Second them back. Sorry, guys. I mean, finish your breaks too. I, I genuinely just have to really run to the bathroom. So. Okay, cool. All right, let's go over this. This is for Jasba NYC. We're seeking a full on-premises liquor license at the premise located at 207 Second Avenue on the corner of 13th Street and 2nd. Um, it's for a place fitting about 150, 150 people. There are 14 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet. Um, it won't have any televisions. You're gonna serve Indian food at all hours of operation. Um, you're going to play ambient background music via DJs and or pre-recorded streaming services and playlists only. Um, this location used to be the Momofuku Sam Bar, which was originally approved for wine and beer by this committee in March of 06. The license was upgraded to OP in 2007, and the operator was approved to operate until 2 a.m. all days. They closed during the pandemic after being approved for a sidewalk cafe application in April 2019. The applicant... Today before us currently operates Janoon, which is a high-end Indian restaurant um, a bit more uptown. There have been no commercial 301 complaints since 2018 at that location, and there have been zero commercial 301 complaints at the location the application is for. Um, we did not receive any signatures. I don't believe we received a petition, Rajesh. Did we get one? Did you submit one? Yes, I think my attorney must have submitted one. Okay, let me check my email. That could have been an oversight on our end. Do you know when you sent it? Uh, no, I wouldn't know that. I did speak to him this morning and he said that he sent you, uh, he sent everything which was needed. I believe it, he said that initially I sent it in separate emails and then somebody, uh, and then I believe somebody contacted him to send in just everything in one mail and he said he did that. Uh, uh, is there anyone on your team that can send it to us now? Because I, I, by my record, we don't have it. It's the it's the it's your questionnaire. That's what you or what's what, not the questionnaire. The signed petitions. We ask all applicants to present a petition so that people in the community can sign off on it. I don't have anyone right now. Is it possible I can have it sent tomorrow morning to you? We do not review applications without that petition intact. 
I believe that's the, what we're going to do because what it is, Rajesh, is it's like the, it's the paper that says, here are suggested hours of operation. Here's what we're going to run. And it asks you collect signatures from residents of um, people. Oh, that, that, oh, yeah, I, I can probably, I can email you that. I, if that's that's what I was asking, if that's a question, I can, I can email that if you tell me where, because I filled it up and I sent it to him. And that's what he should have sent it to you. I didn't know what that, if that, that I thought that's the, that's the questionnaire which you had sent. Got yes, it, it is. It is a part of the questionnaire. I just pasted yeah, my email address. In that, the, has all the, that has all the information which I signed and sent it to him. So I could I could send that to you uh, right now. Uh, what email do I send to? I uh, said I put I put the email address in the in the chat. Okay, just a minute. Okay, Rajesh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to a different agenda item because I can't okay. I can't wait for it live. Okay. We're going to move on to item number nine at this time. Bear with me, everyone. This is for 248 East 5th Street. If the applicants could raise their hand and we'll join you in. Hi, Frank, how you doing? Good evening, everyone. Okay. Okay, I'm pasting. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Great, how are you doing? Oh, you, you know, just peachy. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, I'm going to read a little bit off. I'm going to let you guys confirm what I'm reading. Um, this is for Viva Natural Pizza located at 230 East 5th. Um, they're at the corner of 5th and 2nd Avenue. Um, this is for a full OP that they're trying to upgrade to. They have 46 table, 113 seats. It's got a full kitchen serving Italian food during all hours operation, no TVs, and then background level um, music only. There are 22 full on-premise liquor license within 500 feet, um, within 500 feet for the SLA rent map, lamp map, excuse me. The applicant came in front of this board in 21, December 21 and February 22, this, as this location was previously in Itapas, which had a full liquor, which had a beer wine license. When they applied again for a full liquor license in summer 2019, it was confusing because it was near a church and they, and they fell within the 200 foot rule. The applicant withdrew their application at that time. Um, the, the applicant has been operating at this location since April, 2022. There have been zero commercial 301 complaints at this location with action necessary. The board has not received any letters in support or opposition. And I did get the, the, I'm gonna need someone on the committee to count the amount of signatures we got, but we did receive the petition. Does that all sound correct, Frank? Can you guys, can you guys hear me? Can you guys? Frank, you're in and out. Frank, I can hear you saying, can we, can you guys hear me is what I believe you're saying, but it, as she says, it cuts in and it's out. It's in and out. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Frank, do you want me to come back to you after the next agenda item? No, the next case is. Frank, are okay, you so in the same David, mode? David, I can, David, I can handle it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Frank, does everything sound correct? Yes. Okay, thanks. Is there, do you want 90 seconds to address anything else? No, I think you should have petition. You should have- yeah. We do have the petition. I just got to get someone to count it. You should have a stipulation with the block association. And you should have two letters of recommendation from residents. Got it. Those were received during the meeting, Frank, a little bit more punctual. No, only, only the second letter. Only the second letter was doing Okay. All right, well, I will certainly, I will note that in the resolution. Okay, committee, do y'all have any questions for this applicant? Hearing none at this time, I now welcome the public who would like to speak. Okay, Stuart, you have 90 seconds, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanna say that um, you should have received um, the stipulations from the block association prior to this meeting 
And so it's a slight area of concern that you did not. Um, we sent it to the SLA chair and to Susan Stetzer. So FYI. And I believe that um, this um, applicant is now changing their entrance to Fifth Street so as to circumvent the 200 feet um, that they are in proximity to the church with. So that is another point of information for you. Thank you, Stuart. As a point of clarification, if a uh, property exists on the corner, it actually counts as being on both streets. And so it doesn't really matter where the entrance is, it's still considered to be on both streets for the 200 foot. Um, no, you are wrong. The door cannot exist where okay. it is. Can I, may, may I offer some clarification? Um, not yet. I'm going to wait until all the public members have spoken, then we'll come back okay. to us. But it looks like that's it. I do have the steps that the East Fifth Street Block Association sent. I apologize that wasn't included. Um, sorry, change of hands and power has been a bit tumultuous. Okay. Sarah, I'm sorry, but can I ask your assistance with reflecting those or reading the steps and seeing how it differs from what we have going on? I'm gonna forward the email to you right now. And then I'm gonna ask to count the pairs as well. Okay, Frank, what would you like to clarify? <clears throat> At the risk of violating the rule of, of having exchanges. Stuart, it's nice to hear from you. I can't see you, but it's been a while. The fact that we haven't engaged, I guess, means you've been okay with the last couple of operators. Um, Stu is actually correct. <clears throat> there cannot be a door within 200 feet. The 85 Avenue A address would be within 200 feet. That door is going to be closed. It'll be exterior hardware will be removed. It'll be an emergency exit only. The only entrance to the premises will be at 248 East Fifth Street, which is more than 200 feet from the church on Second Avenue. Just wanted to clarify. Stuart, thank right. you. Appreciate it, Frank. Uh, okay. Okay, so the reason I ignored the steps was because I think I thought it was from a previous month's application, which I believe, I think y'all were coming last month or something and then I withdrew and then I came. So there was a little confusion there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it got that's lost. That's in um. Sorry, I'm still looking for the petition in the email. I apologize. Is there any way you can just send it again, Frank? I can't. I mean, oh no, I see it. I see it on the website. Okay, it's posted. Yeah, Jeanette, do you want me to count them? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I guess the key information from the stipulations that were agreed upon are probably going to be the hours. So I'm looking at it now. Closing hours not extending past midnight Sunday to Thursday and 2 a.m. Friday to Saturday, which is what is uh, let's see, is it reflected in the email in the application? Is that what y'all agreed on? Midnight, Sunday through Thursday and 2 a.m. Friday to Saturday? Yes. And it looks like otherwise it's quite standard. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the committee for the application? It looks like none. Um, 
I'm going to post the petition here, David, so you can see it, if you please. Um, okay, it seems like it's it's pretty simple. Those are the hours. We're going to go through the normal steps. Let me just fill out the PDF. Sorry. Please hold for about two minutes 30. Okay, I have the stiffs ready to review. Sorry, thank you everyone for your patience. Let's go with the screen. All right, let me get the naming here. Okay, I'll fill in the address uh, in a bit. This license for a full liquor, wine, and beer for a full service restaurant, um, Italian restaurant with a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation. The hours of operation will be opening no later than 11 a.m. all days and closing by midnight Sunday to Thursday and closing by 2 a.m. Friday to Saturday. Um, I will close all outdoor dining allowed under temporary open restaurants by 10 p.m. We'll close any front or rear facade doors and windows at 10 p.m. every night or when amplified sound is playing, including but not limited to the following but you will not have DJs, live music, promoter events, an event where cover fees charged, scheduled performances. You'll play ambient rec recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration without appearing before us first. You won't seek a change in class without appearing before us first. You will not participate in pub crawls, have party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including busy brunches with food. You will have a happy hour and it will end by seven. You will not have wait lines outside. You will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds outside. You'll conspicuously post a stipulation next to your liquor license in your business, and residents may contact the manager or owner at the number, which is 917 226 6972. 
Does that all look correct to you, Frank? It looks good to me, Justin. Yes. Excellent. Okay, then I shall move our committee to vote on the resolution mirroring these stipulations. David, yes. The, uh, I'm sorry, the closing is 1 p 1 a.m. in the application, unless I'm looking at the wrong damn one. No, they have agreed upon stipulations that they shared with the East 5th block. That's what we were discussing earlier. So I will just... Right, you did say that, sorry. Okay, and your vote is for the resolution, David? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Amanda? Yes. I believe we lost Jesse, so just me now. Just Jeanette, yes. This resolution passes. Frank, we're going to send you the stipulations. Please sign at your earliest convenience. Please let us know if you won't be signing them. And thank you so much for your patience. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good evening, y'all. You as well. Okay, we are going to now jump back to number eight, which we already posted in the chat. We can invite Rajesh back and remove Frank and Vivekashina from the... Rajesh. Okay. Welcome back, Rajesh. Were you able to send us what we needed? Yes, I think I sent you. It's from my Gmail ID. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to forward that to, actually, let me take a look at this. Rajesh so does not include the pages that I'm looking for. I will post. Are you sure you don't have anything from JD services? In so I'm in the middle of running this meeting and unfortunately it's gonna be like really hard for me to find it. So it would be it would be expedient if you could just send it to us. Who else would have been able to send it? That's the, the, the liquor attorney in the JD services, Patrick J. DeLuca. Deluca D. Deluca. I'm sorry, our office did not receive it. Otherwise, it would probably be posted online. I'm going to send you the. I'm trying to find the actual form. Okay. I. I can try again later later in the meeting, but I'm not going to hold up every other agenda item because I can't find it. I will say that it's not posted on the SLA, on the CB3 website, which means the person in our office did not receive it in time. So I'll get it, I'll give you some time to remedy that situation. I'm going to move on to number 10 for now. Sorry about that. Okay, we are now moving on to 10, Spicy Moon. That's at 265, 267. If you could please raise your hand if you are part of that. Oh, Frank, hello, welcome back. Hi, it's been a while. It's, it has been, and I, it actually already has been, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna post the questionnaire in the chat. I'm gonna lower everyone's hands. Okay. This is for the space that was uh, previously occupied for Belsay, who came up to us not too long ago. Okay, this is for um, this is for a new liquor license, a sale of assets, and it's for a full OP. It's It's got a certificate of occupancy for 260 people. They'll have two to three televisions <laughs> serving vegan Sichuan food. With, um, and then they'll have background ambient music and live music. No more than 10 private parties a month. There are 14 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet per the SLA lamp map. The previous applicant had a license for uh, beers, beer and wine. 
as they were a vegan brewery. And then, and then they got OP in June, 2022 with stipulations to close by 1 a.m. all days. The applicant has one, the applicants have one full on-premise liquor license in CB3 and four active on-premise liquor licenses elsewhere. There were no 311 commercial complaints at this location since 2018. Um, do we have the, Amanda, if you could count the signatures for that, that'd be grand. It should be in your email, but that was received. Got it. Thank you. Is, does that all sound correct? Well, just the last license was an on-premise brewery and we'll be doing the same thing. Actually, the last operator there really put a lot of money into this space. They did. The brewery, the brewery equipment itself is ridiculously expensive. And we're basically taking over the operation, turning it into, um, as you said, vegan Sashwan, and we'll be brewing our own beer on the premises. And can you confirm their previous hours of operation? The prior applicants? Yes. I cannot, I don't okay. know them. Okay. I, we, I just want to be aligned to them, and I believe it was um, 1 a.m. all days. It, one of the problems, uh, and I know you may hear this again or, or before, but one of the problems, I mean, they cut bait because they were a big company uh, based in Dallas, and they weren't surviving. And I think one of the problems might have been the 1 a.m. closing. If that's what they had, I don't know. I mean, that's what you said, so... Okay. Well, we're looking for right, two a.m. seven days a week, which, you know, isn't crazy hours. Um, committee, do we have any questions for the applicant? Before, before you do that, can I just add one thing? Sure, There was Frank. an oversight in this application. We should have included DJ and karaoke. These things were not included, and they should have been. Um, karaoke would be contained in the basement only, which is extraordinarily well soundproofed. Okay. In fact, the entire premise is extraordinarily well soundproof. They really put a lot of money into this business. Okay, David, go ahead. Yeah, it's that question um, to on the application. It's a, it's a, got a weird couple of ores in it, but it's not checked off. A full service restaurant, that's fine. But then with the kitchen, open during all hours or less than full service, but serving during all hours or other. There's the last line, there's one of the others. One Did of I miss that? I'm sorry. Great, what's your intention on serving food and when? Thank uh, you. Excuse me, this is a June Kwan, I'm the operator. Mm -hmm. So we, we will serve the food uh, uh, from actually 8 a.m. We want to try a vegan uh, breakfast, vegan cafe. Okay, our concern is that you serve food because then it removes the pretense that it's just a bar. So we, we will serve food? the we daytime, serve morning time. We will not serve any drink at all. No, wait a minute, June. Yes, we're going to serve food during all hours of operation. Correct. Yes, we will serve food during all of the our operation. It's a restaurant. Not a bar. Okay, thank you. That seems to be the only clarifying, um, ah. And then for the DJ and karaoke, um, I also see that you have live music checked. Can that, can we restrict that all to the cellar, to the basement level? Sure. Okay. Uh, yes, I think the upstairs, we can do the uh, very ambient, quiet music. Okay, so the first floor will be recorded music. The basement will be the live, the uh, live music and the karaoke. Correct. Correct. Excellent. Okay, that works. All right, we are now going to move this over to the public. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak on this item? Two fifty, two sixty-five, Barry. Okay, seeing so now we're gonna go back to the committee. Um, sorry, I was gonna use that time to fill out the steps, but now I'm gonna to have to do that here. Any other any other questions? Hey, can I can I ask a question while you're doing those steps? 
Oh, the, the sips that we throw up on the screen. Yeah, no, but I wanted to ask a question, Jeanette. Yeah, because in, in prior in prior cases, I heard you asking for a C of O. Do you want to see a copy of the C of O with the applications? No, no, no. I just want to make oh. sure that it's noted. I think okay, the other right. applicant had left it blank. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. As for the steps I'm going to put up on the screen, it's just better for everyone to be able to see what we're talking about. Um, and I just, I'm just a little bit ill prepared. I was thrown into this role a little bit late. If, if we're going to. Doesn't just... show at all. You're, you're natural. <laughs> flattery will not work here. Eh, there's no flattery. Too old to flatter. So why, why you're revving up, uh, Jeanette, can I ask them about the open hours? And Please go ahead. You? Uh, so you, you wrote 8 a.m. to 2 a.m., which is the hours you, you intend to run your business. Um, a liquor license doesn't have a start time. It's just the end time. So the 2 a.m. would apply to the liquor license. We also ask for you to give a guaranteed open no later than hour so that we, you know, um, basically the, the, the longer you're open during the day, the less likely you are to be a problem bar. That's our reasoning. Um, and, and a few things that are related. Anyway, do you really want to guarantee 8 a.m. as your open hour? Because if you open at 9 a.m., you would be in violation. Um, and this open hour doesn't affect the ability to serve liquor at your early hours. So you could open at, uh, you said you'd, well, I don't know if you would tend to uh, serve liquor in the morning, but if you opened at eight, you could serve liquor at eight, according to the SLA. But if you say you're going to open eight now and you open at 10, then you're in violation, unless you told us 10. Then it'd be fine if you opened at eight, because we need to know a time at which you would. David, can I interrupt you a second? Yeah, I'm not explaining well. Help. Yeah, I, I want to actually just phrase it a different way. June, if we yes. tell them 8 a.m. and you decide in six months to a year, 8 a.m. doesn't work and you want to go 10 a.m., you would have to come back to the committee and change those hours from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Do you want to start with 8 a.m. and do that down the road if you have to? Or give them a later closing hour? If you give them a 10 a.m. opening hour and you open at 8, they're not going to care. Okay, that sounds very good, Frank. Okay. So what David, hour we'll would be most realistic? David, we'll take your suggestion. We'll open it. We'll say we'll open at 10 a.m. If we open early, we open early. Okay. You could say noon as far as I'm concerned. It's real, it's real um, cold, June. How about 11? Okay. Sounds good to me. Thank you. We have got to come up with a better way to explain this because we, we do waste cycles in the meeting and I... I I mean, a dozen times and I still can't do it properly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's go over this together, everyone. Sharing my screen. Committee napkins, please, please look alive. Okay. Um, this is for the place 265 and 267 Bowery, 20X Hospitality at Bowery LLC. Don't worry, I will spell check before it goes out. Um, June Kwan will be um, operating a vegan Sichuan restaurant with a full kitchen, open and serving food during all hours of operation. The hours of operation will be opening by 11 and closing by two. You'll close all outdoor dining allowed under temporary open restaurants by 10 p.m. all days and have no speakers or TVs mounted outside. You will close any front or rear facade doors and windows at 10 p.m. every night or when there is amplified sound. You will not have promoted events, any event which a cover fee is charged or scheduled performances and more than 10 private parties per month. You will have ambient background, recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration to the method of operation for any physical alterations of any nature without first coming before CB3. Do not seek a change in class before coming to CB3. Um, you will not participate in pub crawls, have party buses or boozy brunches, no unlimited drink specials. You can have a happy hour and it'll end by 7 p.m. You will not have wait lines outside. You'll have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds aside. You're gonna conspicuously post 
the stipulations next to your liquor license and residents may contact the manager at the phone number here. Sorry, let me transfer that. June, what's your phone number? Whoever the number. Nobody wants your number. Joanna. You want my personal number or you want the- No, Joanna, Joanna's number. The number one, if someone, if a neighbor has a problem with the noise going on, what number do you want them to call? Jo Joanna's going to be the person. Okay, so it will be 917-474-3553. And it's Joanna Avery. Um, committee, do we have issues with the fact that this name is not what was on the application? Joanna's on the liquor license application. I see June Kwan on the, on yeah, the where, where it says applicant. Yeah. Okay. I see your name. Thank you. You're welcome. Joanna Avery. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this, this whole thing should be Joanna Avery. Would you like me to add June Kwan as well? You can, but you wouldn't reach June at that number. That's Are fine. You... I think, I, I think the idea is. Okay. That's fine. I'm, I don't know. Jeanette. I think that we have had things like general managers as the uh, contact at the bottom and okay. not at the top as the, is the applicant. Um, I'm pretty certain of that, but, uh, okay. but you've been on the committee longer than me, actually, I think. No, uh, David, I came after you. Okay. Um, I think the only issue is if there's a concern, Joanne is going to be the one to deal with it. Certainly. That's fine. I'm not, I'm nonplussed. Both the names were on the, the application. I just didn't notice until now. Um, and then the last stipulation is I will play ambient background music only on the first floor and they have live music DJs and characters on the basement level only. Does everything sound correct? It correct. does to me, June. Excellent. Yes, correct. Next, yeah, So item nine though is a, is a little out of sync with number 18. Yeah. Number yeah, that's correct, that's true. I'll uncheck, how's that sound? Good pick up, David. Yeah, I think this is what they intend. That's what I've been hearing. Excellent. Okay, thank you. It looks correct to the applicant. We're now, I'm now moving to the committee to vote on the resolution that mirrors these stipulations. David? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. This motion passes. Frank, you know the drill. We're going to send you the steps. Please sign, or if you're not going to let us know as well. We'll be signing it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the Thanks. month. Thanks, Frank. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, June, as well. And Joanna. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Okay. Y'all, I am drowning in a sea of resolutions and things of that nature. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, my God, it's so helpful. A lot to handle and to manage. Okay. All right. Y'all, we are gonna, I'm gonna keep skipping number eight because I don't have any new email. Oh, do I? Yeah, I don't have any new emails. So I'm gonna pass over Second Avenue again and then we're gonna move over to uh, number 11, which is 300 East 5th Street. Is this Raku? Or not Raku, Sushi Bayam? Yes, Sushi Bayam. Okay, are the applicants from Sushi Bayam present? Phil, thank you for joining us again. I apologize, Phil. It's just so chaotic on my end that I, I couldn't like figure out how to put you next. Oh, you. no need to apologize. I, I just thought I'd try my hand, but yeah. I'm, I'm I, I, I appreciate I appreciate the uh the audacity. <laughs> Is the applicant present? Yes, he should be. Um I'm not sure if his name is under Tim Lynn. Um, Can he raise his hand? I see a Tim. Cool. Okay, there we go. Hi, Tim. Can you confirm that you are the applicant? Hi, yes. Uh, Tim, Tim Lynn here. Yeah, great. Excellent. All right. Thank you both so much. Okay, I post the questionnaire in the chat. And I will now read some of the key points of the application. If I can open the file. Okay, uh, this is for uh, Yu Yin Lin operating sushi by M. This is at 300 East 5th Street, also known as 86 Second Avenue. It's on that corner there. 
Um, they're looking to upgrade their beer wine up to a full OP. Um, there are 23 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet of the lamp map. There's also a church within 200 feet of this location where the door is. Um, it's a sushi bar with a sushi prep area serving food during all hours of operation, no television, background ambient music only. This location was previously licensed for an OP um, DBA Marianne's um, and expired in November, 2017. And their hours were up to 10 PM Sundays and Mondays, 10.30 Tuesdays. Um, and then Wednesdays, Thursdays, 11.30. Uh, midnight Fridays and Saturdays. So basically the latest that they were open was midnight, <laughs> opening by noon all days. Um, and that was way back when in the day in 2010. Um, they've been a beer wine license holder in this place since October, 2021. They were previously at 75 East 4th Street. Um, there were no commercial 301 complaints at this location requiring police action. And 14 residents who live within two blocks of the location signed a petition in favor of the application. Does everything sound correct there? Uh, yeah, that, that does sound correct. Do you mind if I add a couple more words? Would love if you could also, while you add that briefly, if you could touch on the 200 foot situation. Uh, yeah, it's funny you say that because I was not aware of that. I'm looking it up now, but um, quickly, I'll just add hello again, everyone. My name is Phil Dorn, attorney with Pizetsky and Bookman. With me is Tim Lin, whom you just met, owner of Sushi by M, uh, which is a neighborhood favorite sushi restaurant with two locations within the community. Uh, Tim is looking to just do a class change from beer and wine to full liquor at his location on 5th and 2nd. Uh, there will be no other changes to the method of operation whatsoever. Uh, he'll be closing at 1130, just like he always has. No outdoor space, background music only. Uh, he simply wants full liquor because many of his customers uh, want to enjoy Japanese whiskey or other similar cocktails while eating their sushi. Um, this is a, a, an omakase restaurant. Um, this is not a bar. There's no, there's no stand-up bar. This is, I hope many of you know it. It's, it's very quiet, very um, formal yet inviting. Um, we hope that the last year and a half of operation uh, for Tim has proven that uh, he's a good neighbor and he does not operate any sort of loud bar or anything like that. Um, and like I said, aside from the cocktails, this place will remain the exact same. Um, as far as the church goes, I don't think that church exists. Um, LAMP is often incorrect um, and outdated. And in looking it up here, I, I don't see it. Um, in any event, if it does exist, um, the SLA will simply turn us down uh, and they'll, they'll say, nope, it exists. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's here. I don't think it's, it's, I don't see it on a map. I don't see a website. I don't, I don't see it anywhere. Got it. So I am of the accord. I'm of accord with you there. I think what we do is we note that we believe that there is a church. We note that it's on the SLA lamp map, but we also note that as community members, we're not sure it's operational. So we leave the discretion up to them. So Great. So we're like basically aligned there. So we will note it in our resolution but we will proceed as if it's not going to impact because ultimately that's up to them. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, if there is one within 200 feet and we also agree with that determination, then we won't be moving forward with this application. Excellent. Okay. The, um, is it the collegiate church that was at seventh? It okay. says the Iglesia Evangelica Hispana. Oh, and I didn't know. I don't know, but we shouldn't mm -hmm. cast doubt and we shouldn't say we don't know. No, cer we certainly not. It shows it. Okay. Right. So regardless of what we think the operational status is, what we're going to do is note it in the application, and then we will have to just write our steps anyway, because ultimately, if they don't see that as correct or not, whatever, that's up to them to decide. Right. So we will note it and proceed otherwise. Committee, do we have any questions for the applicant and the representative? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to go to the public, um, and I will now recognize Laura for 90 seconds. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just, the church was operational before the pandemic. Their website's not functioning, I agree. I walked by the other day, their sign is still up. There's still a big giant cross on the front of the building. Just want to share that information. You mind so, pointing you know, at where it is? Um, it is, 
I mean, I don't know how to point out. I'm, I'm going to use my time and then we can go there. Yeah, if, I will, if yes. that's okay. It's on it's on the same side of the street as Sushi by M, sort of mid block, maybe to the lower portion of the block. So I, it's just um, that is the same church that, you know, for many years, Nye was trying to upgrade when they were at 85 Second Avenue. And they were not allowed to, even when it was suggested moving the door to the side street because the neighbors had had some problems there. I did not speak to that application because we would not propose, you know, we would not uh, speak uh, against the decision of the immediate neighbors or a local block association. That's not our place. But as far as this church goes, it physically looks like it's still there. Although I agree, I've been checking reopenings and I don't see the website functioning. So having the SLA make a determination sounds like the way to go. Um, but if right now it's on the lamp and you can physically see it when you're, you know, it's a big, there's a little, a big brick building with a big cross on it. You can't miss it. Um, what's actually happening side, I can't tell you. That's, that's what I've got. And I just have to be, you have to be considerate of what 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 gets unleashed when something like this happens and other upgrades that may follow in its path so it, it is something that it's an important rule that we we should respect thanks thank you laura the chair now recognizes stuart to speak 90 seconds Stuart. hi yes i live around the corner from that church and that church is operational the application that you heard earlier for Viva Cucina is moving their door so that they are not 200 feet within that church's door. The way that Mary Ann's operated was they moved their door around the corner. As a lawyer from such a prestigious firm, I'm surprised that he would not know that and that he would just say that it does not exist. That is just outrageous that you approve this um, application knowing that with them not moving their door to the Fifth Street entrance seems to me to be really wrong headed. Thank you, Stuart. Um, that looks like all the comments from the public. We will now return this to committee. Committee, any questions? So sorry, if we're not sure if the church is in operation, we just, what do we usually write? Because I know we didn't want to um, speculate. I, I, I'm not speculating on the operation, like the operations of the church at all. I think all we do is we note that because it's up to them to say, because it falls under 200 foot. We're not making the determination because it falls under 200 foot. So we will note that as a whereas in our resolution. And then it's up to the SLA to determine like if that's the proper judgment. Cause that's why it's like a 500 foot hearing. It's like a 200 foot hearing. Like they like, they will just determine it. It's not up to us. And if the building also has residential units, does that, uh, do we note that? You mean the church also has residential units? The, the building where the church is located if it had residential units. Oh, then that would preclude it from the 200 foot rule because then it's not a solely, solely like so it, its sole purpose is not place of worship. Then it's, like precluded from the 200 foot rule. I'm trying to remember, but I think I looked this one. Up. Complicated. We, I don't think we would point it out. Uh, we would simply say, this is the SLA map, you know, please make your determination. It, this, that is an SLA rule and they're pretty hard about it. Yeah. Again, like for, for our purposes, right. We can't like not mention it. And as Phil said, they'll they'll go up and they'll apply. And then if that's the thing that falls through, then they would just withdraw and they wouldn't continue with that operation, method of operation. So like, let's ignore that. We'll, I mean, we'll have that resolution whereas, but let's conduct our discussion as if like, we're just evaluating it. Is that, does that make sense? I just, we've talked about that before. So that's why I'm asking, um, particularly with the application on Avenue A and between 10th and 11th a few months back. Yep. I'm still ha having trouble finding th this church. Is it's, if you look on Google Maps, there's clearly a place marked Iglesia. Like, right. Is it on the, it's, it's obviously on 2nd Ave. On, on, in which, in which it's on It's on the block. It's next door to where the Nomad used to be. If I'm facing Nomad or where Between Nomad used to be. Between 4th and 5th? 
I'll let you do your investigation after. We'll, um, right. we'll okay. let me continue with the committee. Do you mind if I just address a point really quick? Sure, very briefly. Um, yeah, just, just very briefly. I, I make no representations that we are or are not within 200 feet of a church, and I make no representations that this church exists or not. I, I, to whomever made the claim that I'm saying it doesn't exist, that, that that's not the case here. Uh, I'm just saying that it, it's a determination for the SLA to make, and we, of course, will abide by the law. We're, we, we always do, and it's, we would never try to evade the law. Um, and for, for whatever it's worth, our, our entrance is on Fifth Street, not on the app. Your entrance is on Fifth Street? And I don't, so what is this? Does so what? maybe we don't need to go into this, but I'm wondering what is the rule about if the entrance is around the corner? The but rule it's is- for the SLA to determine. I'm happy to, to give you the answer. The rule is if either the church, the place of worship or the applicant licensee is on a corner, then both cross streets apply as opposed to if it was just mid block, then only the street on which it's located is, applies. So because we are on a corner, it doesn't matter which, which uh, street, whether it's on fifth or on second Avenue, it's just a matter of the measurement, the way the crow flies. Okay, okay but crow Bill, flies. I've been, to, I've eaten at this restaurant like multiple times and the entrance is certainly not on fifth street. So All right, I, I was looking at the, the address, the address is, is uh, a fifth street address. You're right. It is, it is an entrance on second half. Okay. I don't want to belabor this point. I think we just put it in the resolution. It's up to the SLA. I, I don't think it bears more discussion. So let me move on from that. Do we have any other questions committee on like the way it's operating? We've already heard from the public. Any other questions? Okay, I am now transferring all the stipulations. Give me two minutes. Sorry, team. Um, is the legal entity Yu Ying Lin or is there like an LLC or anything like that? Um, it is, you know, let me pull it up real quick. Um, I think it's, well, that's a good question. On the um, application, it just says the applicant's name. So if we could just clarify. Right. Uh, I thought it was Sushi by M LLC, but I went to the application as well. Um, let me pull it up for you real quick. Sushi by M2 LLC. That sounds familiar. Okay. And for whatever that's worth, it's sushi by M2 is one word. Mm, thank you. Okay. Okay. I have the steps ready to review because it was simple. Yay. Okay. Applicant and representative and committee, please take. These are the stipulations for Yu Ling Lin, representative of Sushi by M2 LLC at 300 East 5th Street. Um, license is for full OP. It's a full service sushi restaurant with a kitchen open and serving food during all hours. The hours of operation are opening by noon and closing by 11.30 p.m. all days. They will not... I'm gonna mute, that might be, thank you, thanks Tim. Um, I will not use outdoor space for commercial use, which prohibits use of alcohol outside. 
you'll have a closed fixed facade with no open doors or windows except an entrance door and that'll close by 10 p.m or when amplified sound is playing including but not limited to djs live music live non-musical performances during unamplified live performances tell or sports you'll not have djs live music promoted events any event at which a cover fee is charged or scheduled performances ambient background recorded music only you will not apply for an alteration to the method of operation or physical alterations without coming to us first you will not seek a change in class um, to a full op without first obtaining our approval you'll not participate in pub crawls have party buses you will not have unlimited drink specials including busy bunches with food you will not have a happy hour drink specials you will not have weight lines outside you will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds outside you conspicuously pose the stipulations next to your liquor license and residents may contact you, Tim, you, Lynn, at 347-688-8101. Does that all look correct to you, Phil and Tim? Yeah, I would just want to confirm with Tim. Tim, are you going to be open at noon every day, or do we want to put a little later just in case, and you, you're welcome to open earlier if you'd like? Tim, can you hear me? Tim, go uh, on. Yeah, so, yes, yes, yes. Now, yes. Okay. Um, will you yes. will you be open most definitely by noon every day, or would you like to put later? Um, I mean, how how you're already in operation. How how what time do you open every day? So we open 12 p.m. every day actually. You open at noon every day. Okay, then great. We'll yeah, leave it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. sounds good. Okay, uh, moving to vote to the committee on the resolution that mirrors these stipulations and it does include the 200 foot consideration. David. Uh, I didn't realize I had my hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry, you're taking a vote. Yes. Yes. Okay, Sarah. I'm confused. What are we voting? On the resolution. On the resolution with, with the, that it, there's a church 200. Yes. Um, yes. Amanda. Yes. Jeanette, yes. This motion passes. Phil and applicant and Tim, we will send you the stipulations. Please sign promptly. If you're not going to sign, please also let us know promptly. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank and you. Jeanette, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, I did I receive I did receive a new email. Okay, we're just you have sent me the same file multiple times none of them include the petition that of in question. Um, uh, no, maybe this one does. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna call Rajesh in for a second. Oh, wrong person. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Hi, Rajesh. Yes, hi. Okay, so I'm gonna send you the link to the petitions that I'm asking about. If you look on the SLA website, Okay. Gonna, this is the link where I would find everyone who's come tonight has questionnaires, applications, and petitions. What we don't have for your application is petitions. I see eight only has an application and questionnaire. You can look at the example of the petitions that other applicants have, okay? So that's what I'm going to leave you with. Um, I will come back to you again later. I apologize, but I, I, we can't, I can't keep waiting for the, okay. Sorry about that, y'all. Now we are going to move on to Raku, number 12 on the list, 342 East 6th Street. Can we get hands up from the people who represent that application? Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Hi, Mike. You're a little quiet, but we do. We we do hear you. Jeff, can you confirm you're here? How is this? Is this a little better? 
much better. Thank you. I, okay. I do apologize. I lost my voice over the weekend. So it, it's, oh, not, oh, oh, it's oh. not beautiful. I won't be singing. We're all soft, but close. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I think Jeff Lamb and perhaps uh, Huey Cheng may also be in your Zoom room there. And if either of them are, I'd, I'd ask that you um, unmute them. Yep, uh, Jeff is here. He won't be uh, joining us. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This is for the application at um, 342 E6. This is uh, an address that is a couple of units. So this is for store number four or six. Four. Four. And this is the space previously occupied by kindred i'm going to read out a bit about the application and then we'll go from there this is for a new liquor license the place is not currently licensed i believe that license just expired at the end of january um this is for raku or uh the udon restaurant that's currently operating at the same address on a different unit number six down the street um it is looking to operate opening 11 a.m. all days and closing by midnight all days. There'll be no other business besides just food and alcohol. Um, there are 23 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet. Um, just to go back to the history of Kindred, they ceased operations in August, 2022. Their license expires in April, 2023, but they've been inactive since November, 2022. All this to say is they're not currently operating, but um, it's technically a licensed, inactive license at that location. Um, they There have been no commercial complaints at that location um, since 2018. Um, the applicant currently operates the same restaurant, as I said, down the street, same address, store number six, with the wine beer license, where there have been no 301 complaints since 2018. They also operate two other licensed restaurants in CB3 and one licensed restaurant in CB2, all with no 301 complaints. Um, and there were 63 residents who live within two blocks of the location who signed a petition in favor of the application. Uh, only background music, just uh, streaming only, um, no TVs, and it's um, it doesn't have any like fixed, it doesn't have any like French doors or windows like that. Um, it's looking to serve food at all hours. And it does have outdoor dining, um, which I believe, I mean, the Kindred Shed is still up. So I think we're all familiar with that space. Does that all sound correct? Is there anything to correct there, Michael? Um, no, that, that, sounds, um, that sounds right. I'll just, it's a point of clarity though. Um, it, the, the, the existing Reiku space is gonna continue to operate. So they're not moving. They're next door to one another. Um, business is good. They're doing well. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a Japanese noodle restaurant. So they're, they're, they're taking the space next door, um, which will, there won't, there's no interior access, but, um, they're going to operate them both as, as Reiku. Okay. All right. uh is one just going to be like, is it just more seating? There'll be separate kitchens and such. There'll be separate kitchens. Yep. Uh, more seating. There's a, there's a, there's a small bar in this one that seats five, five guests. Um, but again, this is not a big space either. I think the space is under 800 square feet. I think it's 760 some square feet. So it's, it's not a large space. Um, the, there are you accordion. Clarify, Mike, actually, I don't, it didn't have checked that it was a COA or a letter of no objection. I, there's an LNO. Um, okay. um, oh, what did I say? Okay. Uh, lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, it's a small space. There's a, there's a small bar. Um, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. They, there is, there are currently accordion doors that are being removed and a fixed facade is actually being put in, which, I think should should please you all. Um, so they're they're gonna they're gonna button it up. Excellent. And okay. I don't mind saying that I love this restaurant. I eat yeah. there a lot. Okay. Um, committee, do we have any questions for the applicant? Sorry, I probably just hijacked the situation. Oh, and the roadbed seating is proposed closure at ten at ten p.m. So of course. Just, yep. Uh, committee questions. Okay, 
anyone from the public who would like to speak on this application? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna move on to back to us. Committee, now that we've heard from the public, do we have any questions? Hearing none, I'm just gonna transfer all the information into my handy little step sheet. Please hold. Oh, sorry, um, Jeanette. What's up? They, they wanna, they're gonna open at noon, not 11. Um, they, they may actually open at 11, but uh, they don't want, as David was pointing out earlier, they don't want to be held to that. They're going to try. And if it works, then they're going to, then they will open at 11. But um, if it doesn't, then they're going to open at noon, which is the same time they open next door. So um, if you could just, if we could move that opening hour from 11 to 12, I would appreciate it. Excellent. No problem there more of a reason for us to clarify in advance because I was just staring at that and I was like, well, they said 11, I'm not going to bring it up. And I could have left him in the lurch, you see. So. Okay. Uh, David, I will be more mindful and make sure to remind them every time I read the steps. How's that sound? And I can more concisely say it. Thank you. Okay. No one ever accused me of being a good wordsmith. Never. Okay. Well, people have accused me of that. So I'll just go ahead and handle it. <laughs> Um, but I actually think though we could put it into an application somehow so that, yeah. Okay, okay. here we go, team. I'm getting faster. Okay. Okay, this is for, again, Kufuku, DBA, Raku. Um, it's located at 342 East 6th Street, store number four. Um, it'll, it, you will operate as a, oh, this is for full, full liquor license. Um, operate a full service restaurant, uh, specifically serving Japanese udon with a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation opening no later than noon and closing by midnight all days. Um, you will close all outdoor dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program by 10 p.m. You have a closed fixed facade with no open doors or windows past 10 p.m. or when amplified sound is playing. You will not have DJs, live music, promoted events, any event at which a cover fee is charged, got performances, more than or more than three private parties per year is what I saw noted. You'll play ambient recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration to the method of operation or physical alteration without first coming for CB3. You will not seek a change in class to a full on-premise liquor license without first obtaining our approval, not participate in pub crawls, party buses, you will not have unlimited drink specials, boozy brunches. You will not have a happy hour. You will not have wait lines outside and you will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering, noise or crowds outside. You're gonna conspicuously post these stipulations next to your liquor license and residents may contact the manager, Jeff Yam, or Huey Chang, excuse me, is what's on the application. Yep. Um, and that will be at 212-717-777-1069. Does everything look right to you, applicant and representative? It looks good to me, Jeff. Are you in agreement? Yep, it looks good to me too. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, committee, I'm going to move to now vote on the resolution that mirrors the stipulations. David. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Jeanette, yes. This motion passes. Jeff, Huey, and Michael, we will send you the stipulations. Please sign them promptly, or please let us know if you won't be signing them promptly as well. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're getting faster. All right, we're going to move on to 13 short stories. Thir Agenda item 13, the place is called short stories. Um, it's at 355 Barry between 3rd and 4th Streets or 3rd and 4th Square. Um, posting the questionnaire now. Are the applicants present? If so, please raise your hands.
Amanda, if you could let them in, please. Good evening, Michael Kelly, representing the applicant. Great. Okay. I have uh, Lon Kotorski, Raphael Kotorski, and Martin Borkin, the owners, present. Good evening. Hello. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, I'll go over the application. This is for Something Short LLC, DBA Short Stories. They're at 355 Bowery. Um, they have a letter of no objection for 74 people. They have 30 seats at 14 tables and then a 19 foot ish bar with how many seats? Uh, nine seats. Okay, great. They're serving fusion, fusion food prepared in a full kitchen during and serving food during all hours of operation, no televisions. Um, we're gonna go over some of the music situation shortly, but um, we would be requesting ambient background music only. There are 22 full on-premise liquor licenses within 500 feet for the lamp map. Um, this location was previously licensed to 355 Restaurant Group LLC, also DBA short story. So this is a sale of assets. Um, I can't seem to find the correct operating hours. They had disciplinary action due to non-compliance incidents during COVID measures in July, 2020, which I'll also ask for clarification of. The, application, the applicant has never been licensed, but currently works in private dining and events in the city. Um, there were seven commercial 311 complaints at this location since 2018. 46 residents who live within two blocks of location signed a petition in favor of the application. Um, and yeah, that's all I have so far. Is that anything incorrect before we jump into the um, music situation? And nothing incorrect. Okay. And then the one other question is, do you, rem I am having trouble figuring out what the operating hours are for short stories. Cause my research says that their license actually expired on Jan 31. Yes. Um, they were all, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, they were open from 4 PM to 2 PM, 2 AM Sunday to Wednesday and 4 PM to 4 AM on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. So what's confusing to me is I believe their license has expired, but I don't see any indication that it's closed. So is my Intel wrong or are they operating outside of their license? Uh, Martin or Alan? As far as everything, we're aware that they are uh, in compliance. I believe that, they, that the license was most recently done to be accurate and that we are just transferring it over as far as like, uh, as like you mentioned the asset side. Got it. Okay. I will say like I double checked this because I thought it was a bit awry that like I found them in inactive licenses. Um, I don't know what weight that has on us here because in my head, like if it had expired, it's still the sale of the app. Mm, well, it does kind of matter. Yeah, our application is in, so it's within 30 days. I believe they renewed it, but I'm not sure. Okay, so that might be the case that they have renewed it, but that's not what's updated. But to be fair, your application was submitted while they were active. So I think that's fair at this time. Okay, just so the committee knows, I like kept searching it on the inactive license thing. And it said 131, 2023. Granted, it's like not been a month. So I can see that being like an admin error, um, but they are open and operating. It doesn't seem like they're not. The only issue that Susan has mentioned from CB3 perspective, like any calls that she's gotten is that they have um, their shed is non-compliant because you're not supposed to be on the curb like that. Um, though I think that we just need to make sure, or you know, we speak to these applicants here and make sure they remain in the situation. Do y'all have any questions for the applicants at this time? Could I add a few things in? Uh, yeah, if you can be very brief. Okay, we also contacted the Bowery Block Association and Bowery Alliance and Neighbors, Michelle Campo, emailed me back, asked for a questionnaire and layout, which I sent to her, I didn't hear back from her. The major change would be the opening hours at 10 a.m. for brunch, lunch every day. Uh, as to the DJs, we'll be doing the same thing as the predecessor. We'll be using our own employee and bringing others in once in a while. Everyone mm -hmm. would be using our sound system. The goal is to play music to accentuate the ambience, not to have night, nightclub level music. Most of the time it will be background, once in a while a little louder, but not loud enough where diners can't hear each other speak. 
will be using a sound, uh, sound limiter as the previous licensee. We didn't know they had violations, but we would talk to the neighbors about that. And at this time, I'll let you go ahead, but the owners would like to talk about their experience in the field. If they could keep it to two minutes, that would be greatly appreciated, but please go ahead. Um, I'll jump on first. My name is Martin Borkin. I'm the COO. Um, as to touch upon the outdoor shed, we are in the process of getting it compliant with our general contractor. We're just making sure that we're getting the proper specs done beforehand. So just want to make sure we touched upon that. As you said, it was outstanding. My history with food and beverage, I've been in the industry for about 15 years um, in front of house capacities in hotels, bars, restaurants. Brands like Blue Ribbon, Morimoto, um, Richard Sandoval, Fairmont, Intercontinental, everything from opening restaurants and hotels all throughout the country, including working in New York and Miami as well. Um, so I have a lot of experience working in uh, these capacities, being general manager, assistant director of food and beverages, running these departments and having that experience with uh, liquor sales and controlling that and staffing appropriately to handle that appropriately for our guests. Great, thank you very much. Um, okay, back to committee. Does anyone have any questions for the applicants? Or did another one of the team want to speak? I think that's in order if you'd like. Uh, yeah, I am I, I am a, a, a Raphael Gasorski. I'm the chef and also co-owner. Um, I am a resident of the East Village. Um, I've been a chef in uh, Manhattan for about 10 years now. Um, worked in restaurants like uh, Gramercy Tavern, Maria as well. Um, this will be my first venture as, as a chef and also co-owner. Really, really excited to bring all my hard work, all my experience to our fellow neighbors. Um, yeah, it's re really, all, really glad to say, just very, very excited. Thank you for your time. Great. Okay. David, go ahead. I think you're physically raising your hand. Oh, okay, you're not. All right. When we'll move to the public. I recognize Denise for 90 seconds. Please go ahead, Denise. Oh, and also, sorry, before you start the time with Denise, again, if the members of the public and the community can state their context, like do you live nearby, what's what's the property mean to you? That'd be great. Go ahead, Denise. Hello, I'm uh, Denise Langenecker. I live uh, at 357 uh, Bowery, the building in front of uh, next to um, short stories. Um, yeah, I live there since 2000 and um, the music is very 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 loud for me it's impossible to sleep actually uh, I have to get up at seven for work there's music so loud till four in the morning two in the morning it makes it impossible for me to sleep they put the dining chair in front of my house really literally next to the um, our building, the wall, it's um, just uh, down where I sleep uh, in my room. Um, and in the morning, it's a lot of garbage. I have to clean the garbage, otherwise we get tickets. For me to live like this, it's, it's impossible. And I'm horrified to hear that it's going to be music uh, till um, two, four every morning. That makes it impossible actually to sleep. I know I'm live in Manhattan. I uh, know there are people, there are bars. Um, I can deal with Phoebe's there. It's um, not too loud. But that what we experienced the last years, ma'am, this is, uh, it's, it's, it was horrifying. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Chair now recognizes Mark Lindahl to speak. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, <clears throat> I live at 355A Bowery on the second floor. <clears throat> and um, if you guys don't know the stipulations for short stories from their previous liquor license was that they were to have no DJs. They were not to have DJs at all. And <clears throat> yet they have a DJ booth with subwoofers and we live in a building that was built in, you know, 1900 or something. And so the, the base just echoes through the whole building. I mean, it's just, you can't sleep at all. And uh, <clears throat> so if you guys wanna go through, <clears throat> go back and uh, 
see what those stipulations are. You can see that they're, they aren't supposed to have DJs in there. So the fact that these guys want to now have DJs till two in the morning, four in the morning, I'm sorry, but you know, it's already bad enough. So I would say, get rid of that. Um, the other thing is the shed in front. They don't have, they didn't have permission to put that in there from our landlord. Um, they blast music on that thing constantly, even if there's nobody around, like in the afternoon. <clears throat> so the sound issue for short stories has been atrocious. <clears throat> if they have the same, if they're going to have the same people um, dealing with this, then I would say, you know, let's, let's not do that. <clears throat> If they want to just have ambient music, then they can tear out the sound system with okay. something small. It, it's a good <clears throat> that, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. The next person I'd like to recognize is Stuart. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, Stuart Zamsky from the East Fifth Street Block Association. I mean, looking at this questionnaire, it's obvious that these people are not as they would represent themselves. They are applicants that have no experience as owners and they're asking for a license from that ends at two and 4 a.m. They're taking over a place that is a problem for their neighbors that is breaking stipulations. Um, and, uh, you know, what kind of restaurant serves until two and 4 a.m.? I mean, it's obvious, this is not a, going to be a restaurant. Um, it's just, you know, outrageous. Um, the, the, the Bowery is already well oversaturated. So I hope that you consider, you can read between the lines of the applicants and hear the neighbors and know that this is an application that should be curtailed or rejected. Okay, uh, thank you for your comments. I now recognize Chris to speak. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hi, uh, I'm speaking for, on behalf of the building 359 Bowery. I'm speaking on behalf of all our tenants. Um, unfortunately, people were not able to join the meeting. Um, our concerns are the line needs security. Um, they need more than just security on the door. Um, no outside dining till 12 a.m. Um, just, it's too loud. They just, they don't know when to, to stop. Um, also smoking in the stalls of any kind. There were cigarette smoking all last summer, cigarette smoking, pot smoking. We live right there. It comes right up into our apartment. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to um, our kids. It's not fair to our pets. Uh, loud music. If I can hear it in my apartment with the TV on, it's too loud. I'm two doors down. I can hear everything. Uh, also the, the tree bench outside, the pink tree bench, uh, it's constantly used to sell drugs on Friday and Saturday night. It's like an open air drug market on the street. I constantly get asked when I come home from work, Coke pot, Coke pot, Coke pot. No, I don't want Coke pot and I don't want it in my neighborhood. Also, we've been burned before. They come in with these freaking beautiful menus and they say, oh, we're just going to do brunch. We're just going to, I'm sorry, I'm speaking for a lot of people. So, um, if I'm going over, I apologize. Uh, we've been burned before by this, uh, this space. They say they're going to come in and do brunch and do whatever, and I end up within like two or three weeks canceling the brunch, and they end up ordering the food from Sweet Greens. I watched it last summer. You could wrap up, please. And then it becomes uh, a ground for promoters. They just start doing promotion, promotion, promotion. It's crap. Okay. No. If you could wrap up. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. We're now moving to Louisa. You have 90 seconds. Yes, thank you. My name is Luisa Gui and I live on the third floor of 357 Bowery and my neighbor Denise already spoke. Yes, we are sandwiched between short stories and Phoebe's and so un unfortunately we take, uh, we have all the influx of people from both restaurants. Um, uh, I can you know, second everything that has been said, the uh, noise concerns, um, the garbage, um, and we live on the third floor and sometimes we can hear the bass too. Um, and we are especially concerned because we have kids and um, 
already, as you know, the power is oversaturated and the noise level are so, so high and, and unpleasant. And a restaurant would be a different story, but yes, agreed. We can read between the lines that will be run as a club. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Louisa. I now recognize Michelle Campo to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Good. This is the Michelle Campo that was mentioned before by the lawyer. Yes, he did reach out to me. He sent me information I asked him about. And then since I was rather busy with a lot of different things, including recuperating from surgery, I sent it on to the residents around the spot. Now, I've since heard from them um, that aside from the sound factor, the fact the fact the past um, owner has ended the end of January. This place is still operating now. How do they do that without applying for a change of ownership between the end of the last, you know, uh, person? organization and this time and nobody could reach out to them they didn't they weren't responsive to anybody and i don't even understand how could to me that's illegal period case closed that they should be able to operate without having an actual license and uh this is um this is just outrageous the bowery also by the way is on the Na state and national register of historic places this is not working within any of that. You know, it's not respectful of its neighbors. It's not respectful of, of the city or the state or anybody. And I'm head of Bowery Block Association, and I'm also vice president of the Bowery Alliance of yeah. Neighbors. We do not want that. This is an, an outrageous place and very. Thank you very much. Um, before I go to the next speaker, I would just note that if there is an infarction, not an infarction, infraction on the way someone's operating, um, you are welcome to call our district manager or you're welcome to report it to the SLA. Like we're not in charge of anything punitive or punishing anyone. So if you have, if, if someone is operating outside the, the realm of their license, please feel free to report it to the appropriate agency. Andreas, you are recognized. To speak for 90 seconds. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you guys on the board for your service. This is a lot of work. Um, I live on the build. I live in the building upstairs from short stories. I'm in 355A, uh, apartment three. We're sort of, it's a split building. So we're like just next door. I can certainly uh, corroborate every, all my neighbors' strong um, hesitations to this whole enterprise. You can absolutely hear the music. Absolutely hear the music. Absolutely hear the music all the time if it's on. Um, we've lived, I've lived in the building since 2008. There have been a lot of bars in this space. It was Orange Valve for a long time. It was Wise Men. Short Stories is, is hands down the worst. Um, and I think we, you know, it, it, we're all just kind of reckoning with the idea that the, the, the norm we've gotten used to on the weekends could just become every day of the week. Um, and that's a pretty horrifying prospect that I, we're super uncomfortable with everyone <laughs> nearby. Um, we have small children, you know, it's, Okay, so the, the, on a lot of these applications, there's this notion of ambient or conversational music. Um, from our standpoint, whatever is on their thing, it's a total joke. There's DJs. I found in on their application, there's something about three DJs performing each week, prioritizing DJs that are unknown. Um, so that sounds like really nice and relaxing. Um, okay, I'm just going to be quick so I can get through in the time here. Uh, I routinely have to like fight through a crowd to get into my door on Friday and Saturday nights. There's smoke. Um, you can take a really brief look at their Instagram and see the degree to which the entire bar just spills out in the street. There's dance parties in the street. It's 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 constantly like that, especially in the summer. It's been obviously a little tamer in the colder months. Um, mornings after big nights there, we routinely find bar glasses, trash, and vomit outside of our door. Um, as Mark said, at the outdoor seating shed, they're oftentimes they're pumping music out there, even if there's no one there eating. It's just like automatically thumping out there. Um, so anyway, I think I speak for, well, certainly myself and saying we're super uncomfortable with any expansion of the existing operation. There's just no reason to people live here. There are plenty of, plenty of options for in the neighborhood. Thank you for your time. 
thank you. The chair now recognizes David Mulkin to speak for 90 seconds. David, go ahead. David, you're on mute. There we go. I'm sorry. Um, no worries, please go ahead. David Malkins, Bowery Alliance of Neighbors. The residents who live above and near this establishment, including several children, have for some time had to endure loud music until two in the morning and sometimes later, unruly crowds gathering outside on the sidewalks and vomit in front of doorways. Given this bad, irresponsible behavior, we strongly oppose the expansion of operating hours. This applicant is very newly arrived and should not be granted expanded hours until short stories, serious problems are rectified. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, it looks like we have no other members of the public who would like to speak. We now return to committee. I will let the applicants address some of the concerns for let's say, two minutes, please. Well, uh, I talked to Susan and she told me there were no complaints. So we were, oh, I am very unaware of what was going on there. We're not operating there right now. When we talk about DJs, we're not talking about subwoofers. We're talking about a person playing ambient music and bringing in somebody who's not known, playing once in a while to give other people a chance to do their DJ work. We have experienced operators who've worked in restaurants that can uh, expound on their catering experience and the type of food and chefs that they bring in. Uh, everything that they, you know, people are complaining about is the old management. Maybe trying out new management might help the situation. There would definitely be no music outside, no promoters, no subwoofers. The sound system would definitely change. Uh, they can talk about their type of higher end food and we're also putting in a full kitchen, putting a large investment in. So ordering from uh, Wheat Green would not work in our favor. If uh, Milano or Raphael wanna talk about what kind of catering you do right now, uh, yes, Michael, thank you. Hi, this is Ilana. I appreciate, it. appreciate your time very much. Um, can everybody hear me? Yep. Wonderful. I just want to address some of the points that we heard uh, on a on some of the um, some of the complaints. Uh, it seems as though it's weighing on the character of the previous ownership. The previous ownership operated this place and continues to for, I believe, three and a half years now, and they've done nothing but fail to be completely transparent and fair. They've done nothing but fail. They've brought in chefs and different culinary groups that have essentially gotten them to be bankrupt. They've broken rules on a regular basis. They've had crowds in there that are not favorable or acceptable as per our standards by any means. Um, they've allowed, again, as some of the neighbors said, drugs out on the street and people and crowds and throw up and garbage. That is absolutely not acceptable by our standards. You heard where our owners have worked. Raphael has worked in Michelin restaurants for eight years. Um, Martin Borkin has opened up some of the most prolific and exceptional restaurants and establishments on the East Coast. A few of them, as you know, in the city, like Blue Ribbon and Morimoto alone are, if you could. are very worthy. And I'll, I'll, I'll finish shortly, if I may, please. Um, lastly, I'd like, to, I'd like to say that uh, place being on the registry of the stars, places, I think it requires, I think it lends itself to a very high level of expectation both for the staff and for the community and for the clientele. That is our absolute number one priority. It's what we pride ourselves on. We have a lot of different catering and private and corporate dinner uh, clients that we work with through Something Good Hospitality. That's our company. We've been doing it three years. I can assure you that there's not a single complaint about us, about our character, about mm -hmm. what we expect for our staff and for the quality of our service. Sorry to cut you off. It's already past 10. I appreciate all you're saying and I, I, I think we hear you. I apologize, Sadia is a member of the public and I, I just thought she was with the applicant, so I'm gonna allow her to speak for 90 seconds. Go ahead, Sadia. 
Understood. Thank you so much. And thank you to the committee for your hard work and your late work. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, the partnership of the Bowery Block Association, Bowery Alliance of Neighbors, and, and my fellow neighbors on the block on Bowery between 3rd Street and 4th Street who are joining us this evening and have joined us in this fight for these low these last three years and also just the last few weeks. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly can echo all of the noise complaints that you've heard considerable detail about. I could tell you about our children and other children who live on the block and the situation that we're dealing with, with, with noise, with trash, with the vomit you've heard a lot about. But also, I just want to address uh, the, the applicant's previous point about, you know, we understand that you are new ownership, but you are also banking on three and a half years and considerable press and a very loyal clientele, which you are continuing to promote on Instagram. Currently, you can look very, you know, tonight, you can look at, at, at videos and, and photographs that have been taken just since the first of the year. This is an LLC that was incorporated on the 22nd of December, right? This is a very new operation. So to say that there are no complaints about the current LLC, frankly speaking, that just hasn't, there's not much of a track record here. And so I think it, we have to understand that this is a business that is operating under the assumption that the general public is coming to short stories to enjoy the kind of, well, the, what the, the experience that they have had in the last three and a half years. And so I, I just, I want that, um, I would hope that that be acknowledged. And I, again, I, I just, okay. as local residents, we strongly urge you to deny this new application and, and we sincerely okay. appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Board, I would really appreciate an opportunity uh, to respond to that last comment briefly. I, no, I'm sorry. There was nothing new said in that statement that you need to reply to differently. I will um, state for the record that the operators currently operating and the applicants here are different distinct people. I will also note that I said this earlier, there were zero 311 complaints logged. Um, and like that's, it's hard for us to kind of go without those because when we submit our resolution to the SLA and there's no 311 complaints, you know, they can't really be on our side if we say, well, a lot of people voice complaints after the fact. So it's hard for us to kind of go in that direction. And ultimately they are different operators. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um, uh, board, if I if I may, there was a new issue. I'm sorry, on in the you last... have to wait until I recognize you, please. Thank you, committee. What what are our questions? What do we think, David? It looks like you have an opinion. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm a quandary. Um, I, I am I'm with you. Uh, I mean, it does sound like there was a, a bad situation, and I believe it'll continue. They're keeping the same staff, which they said in the application. Um, they're they're intending to now regularize having DJs. If we can say no DJs, and actually why 4 a.m. If we can pull that in, uh, if we can make it the same as the previous application, and and hold them to it, and I encourage the 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 members of the public, uh, you know, complain about someone violating uh, or just noise generally. File 311. I mean, I know there are people out there who say don't do it, but those people are crazy because then you get in a situation. And I don't know. I don't know why the, the complaints hadn't been filed in, in advance. It's true. You have to be in the know to do that as well. But can we do that? Can we uh, as a committee? What do you guys think? Um, um, sorry for being uh, gendered there. What do we think about about asking them to do what the previous license was allowed and stick to it? Is the previous the previous license? Uh, you know the what the 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 hours was it four a.m. previously? Like I said before, I cannot read the the uh, the. No, we, we, talk, we talked about it like twenty minutes ago. They are. It's, it's, how long is it? No, been? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's not just that it's written. It's that like we just discussed. It. I know, but Your but hours are four a.m. I I'm with you, David. I would love to curtail the hours because if they're truly like a restaurant. I also like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to call BS on this. Like, it's going to be a little more than ambient. Like, no, we set it at ambient for a reason. It's because it's not supposed to extend outside of the area of business. And so it's clearly a large concern for the public. And so for us, that's like a non-negotiable. There will, will be no clause saying, but a little bit louder. It would just be ambient background noise. That'd be part of your stipulations. It'd be what people could report on. As for curtailing hours, knowing that they have 4 a.m., David, currently. Okay. And Maybe it's a lapse license. Maybe they just haven't updated the website. I don't know what the deal is. Given that they're operating at 4 a.m. right now, what would you suggest? Not all nights, but what are you suggesting? The revised hours would be that you- Well, no, if, 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 if these hours that they are applying for are what 
was there on the most recent license, I mean, then they'll, they're almost surely going to get that. Uh, yeah, the DJ thing, you know, the fact that they say they're going to have um, security, like a restaurants, fancy restaurants don't need security. So, you know, it's like there, there are indications here that it is not going to operate. So we need to stipulate to prevent the operation of a nightclub atmosphere there. That's what we need to do. So, yes, uh, ideally no DJ. That's If that's not allowed under the current steps, we we should try that. Is that allowed? There was I was hearing the public saying it's not allowed, but they've been doing it under the old operator. If that is, if it was, if it was not allowed under the old operator, let's stick to that and hope that the and, and public. If if you see stipulations being violated, um, you know, go to the CB3 website and and figure out how to help you filing these complaints. You file a three one one complaint. And then you fill out a form, I believe, on the website saying this is the number of it. We can find those complaints through the 311 database, but also if the office knows about them, um, it's helpful as well. And I will reiterate the same point that David was making, that you can also call our district office. You can call Susan Setzer at CB3. She liaises with the precinct on certain matters. Like, so listen, it's... She prefers email. She, sir, oh, certainly, sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to give, you know, everyone to call Susan, but... Like she, I asked her, I was like, I walk by this address a lot and know it's a bit of a problem. There's always a lot of trash. It's like, it's a problem. I don't go past it during its open hours because I don't find it very savory. So I know it's an issue, but she also has no record in her office. So like the proper channels of complaints have not been coming through. And that is a big problem for us because that's not what we, like we can only write so much in the application. And I mean, in our resolution. Right. It, we can't write, very, we can write a stronger resolution if we had that evidence of they look very know, concretely right. at concrete things like 311 complaints. So that is that is where we we exist right now. That being said, we are still looking at a very different operator. It's a very similar space, right? It's a very small space and like it's a, it's a specific vibe. And the application does not suggest a huge pivot. So applicants, what we are looking to hear now is like what can you compromise on? to make us more comfortable that this is more of a dining institution that serves alcohol rather than like another club because I, i'm here what i've heard from the public is enough for us to not be compelled to license a new operator in a very problematic spot i know david suggested some things so you know things like getting rid of the djs curtailing the hours a bit like what what can you guys come up on to help us out yeah so uh Thank you, thank you again for letting me illustrate my point before. Uh, we certainly would be open to to uh, not having a DJ again. the The point is to match a refined and globally influenced late night menu with a cocktail program of excellence. Frankly, that's really what the goal is, and uh, so we're we're happy to to budge as far as that is concerned. As far as the staff, we're replacing all the staff uh, and they have to match the level of excellence and professionalism that something good expects. We have handbooks, we have everything. We operate like a very, very serious entity, the complete opposite of who ran this establishment and continues to until hopefully we're able to take over. Um, we also are very private party focused. For us, it's very important to work with an elevated crowd that, for example, is celebrating some sort of a business um accolade or uh birthday parties um for a demographic again that's a little bit older um i think i'd point you to two different establishments that we're very fond of such as mother's ruin and bua those are really really delicious late night menus that just have ambient music i sometimes. i'm sorry you're not helping your case here i i go to mother's ruin i'm 29 years old i know what happens at mother's ruin at late night like I, I can uh, I can appreciate. I'm referring to the food only. Your, excuse me. I appreciate that you hold your clients in high esteem, but the fact of the matter is, where alcohol is involved, people get louder. Like that's just the nature of the drink. Like, and that's fine. We want people to have fun, but like what I'm what we need. I think I appreciate that you're conceding on the DJ. That's very helpful for us. Would you also be willing to come up on the hours too? Because no, I mean, what restaurant stays open till four? So again, I, I was only touching on the food aspect, how dynamic the food is and how important the cocktails are to pair with that food. Um, we do intend on serving late night food all the way up until the close in most scenarios. 
And further, the reason why we wanted the earlier hours is for brunch service. And um, so as far as that's, and oh, and lastly, I'm, I'm not representing us as a, like, I'm, I'm not representing the client. I am, I am the uh, client of Michael. I'm uh, one of the owners or will be one of the owners. So just want to make that clear for the record as well. So, I mean, I'm not as perturbed by like earlier hours, I guess for me, like it's, I, I know, I know this bar, I've been to this bar. It's like, it's, I mean, I think I live closest of the committee members at the moment. So I find it challenging to kind of give them everything that they're asking for at this time. What would make y'all comfortable with going through? Because ultimately this place is licensed or if it isn't licensed at this moment, it was very recently licensed. So I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a license at this spot. I don't think that we can stop that. So what can we do in our situation committee to make this resolution and these steps palatable for us? Well, it's a yes or no question. Will you shut at 2 a.m. every day of the week? Um, so so again, the reason behind it's, the fact I'm that- I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to cut you off, but it's a yes or no question, please. We would really like to stay with the hours that we have on the application for the reasons that were mentioned and would really appreciate your understanding and the fact that we do not at all align ourselves or have any association with the former ownership whatsoever. So here's my suggestion. And I know it's quite annoying to come back to this board because as you can tell, it takes a really long time, but it would make us way more comfortable if you could agree to like 10 and two, like 10 on the weekdays, two on the weekends. Because at this point, like we're quite unhappy with 4 a.m. I think the neighbors are quite unhappy with 4 a.m. I've been in, I've actually been in the building that's short start, like uh, higher up and it's, yeah. So I, I don't know if we're at an impasse, if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves, the applicant, if y'all want to talk amongst yourselves. Um, but for, it, it's really challenging for us to put this through in a way that's like not going to be earlier hours. Can you repeat again what your suggested hours were? 12 and two, so 12 during the weekdays and then two for Friday through Saturday or Thursday through Saturday, if you need. And to confirm at this point, it's 2 a.m. every day, except for Friday, Saturday and Sunday, during which it's 4 a.m., correct? Right, so I would be shifting all the hours to two hours up. Would it be all right for us to talk amongst ourselves for a moment? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Thank you. Are you gonna do it? Okay, good. I thought I'd do it like on here. It's like, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Have your not. privacy. You can discuss elsewhere. That's right. Thank you. Chat. I think our hands are tied in the sense that there's gonna be a license here, so we just gotta push the steps in a direction that works for us. Yeah, team. Okay. And then looking at the the only other application we would have left is the gentleman without the steps. And I might have perceived it. Well, okay. Oh, that was yes. Okay. Michael, I'm going to mute you only because I think you're having a private conversation. Okay. Um, I will note now to the rest of the public and the committee that Rajesh says he has given us all. I do not see the signed petitions. I Edwin would have put them up on the website. I'm not getting them in my email. Like there are other pages to the application that Rajesh, you are missing. Please look at the other applications and figure that out. Um, so he's repeatedly emailed you and you're, and you don't see the, the, what he's, he's sending is that he's sending the questionnaire. Sorry. He's sending just the questionnaire. One uh, of the questionnaires had um, the petition without signatures. Oh. It's just uh, like. I as it looks. Board is, excuse me, we've had a we've had a moment to discuss and we're okay. ready to do our uh yes, certainly go ahead. Okay, so as has occurred recently, or I guess a few hearings back, um, we were hoping to meet in the middle, being that we obviously have a lot of respect for the community and we understand the arguments, but we also at the same time understand that we should we will prove ourselves and then we'll come back to you later and show you that we have the uh we have the character to be open at that time. So would you be able to meet us at two o'clock on a daily basis, being that the uh, the license has been two o'clock or more on, on a daily basis until this point? Uh, 
committee thoughts. I mean, we haven't even discussed the DJ aspect yet. They said they'd be fine with no DJ. They've already said oh. that. Oh, they did say that. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, yes, that's correct. How is this different from what you just said before the discussion? I, I thought we said 2 a.m. They Okay, so I said 12 and 2, and they said, can we do two all nights? And I'm asking y'all, where are you on, on that? I'm asking y'all the committee, not the public or the- Yes, yeah, understood. Um, I mean, it definitely sounds like a, a net positive compared to, to what's possible um, if we don't have DJs and we have 2 a.m. every night. But curious to hear what David and Amanda have to say. I'm gonna let you go, Amanda. I've been talking too much. Sure. Bring on Zelda. Agreed. Um, I think I'm of the mindset that I would prefer setting it at an earlier time so that if they are good neighbors, especially considering hearing a lot of the neighbors complaints and a lot of first time neighbors I'm hearing complaints, um, I'd be interested in earlier hours and seeing how they perform. They can come back to us at a later time. David. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd love to see midnight mm -hmm. too, but, um, but, but I mean, I don't know what, what you're thinking, uh, Jeanette. I mean, I would gladly yeah. go for 12 yeah. and two, but um, 2 a.m. is, yeah, it is a whole lot better. 4 a.m. was the thing that really got me like that. That was really bad. So what do you think? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I haven't I haven't reached that level yet, clearly. So let's not let's not deem me queen. Just 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 that quick. I mean, I want I want them to sign the steps like if they don't sign the steps and they go to SLA, then we lose all control over what the steps would end up being. I'm gonna beg them one more time to do midnight and two for the sake of the public. Um, if you guys like, y'all have to know that like when when people are really complaining like this and like in the building, in the adjacent buildings, it counts so much more than like someone who lives a couple blocks away. Not that everyone's safety is not important, but like obviously that holds a lot of water for us, and we've heard a lot of residents in the adjacent buildings, and I and y'all can always come back and ask for more if y'all are truly gonna be the operators that you promised to be. It shouldn't be a problem next time it comes up. It seems that y'all have a good business plan. Y'all know what you're doing. Is it really that much of a concern that you could just come back later? I know it seems really punitive to just be like, can we get those two hours back on the weekdays? But it, it goes a big step towards the community to show that like, okay, you're on their side. You're willing to compromise a little bit more. I know it's compromising a bit from where you had written your application, but I hope hearing the app, uh, hearing the public, you can recognize why, why we're asking for what we're asking. Yeah, so just again, the reason why is that our late night menu is prolific. Chef Raf specifically, Raphael, is very well known for it. He ran the food at Ray's Bar at Kingston Hall. Very, very serious top of line programs in this city, as you know, in Lower East Side especially. We spent a lot of money on the kitchen. We're very up and coming. We have a, we have a staff that we pay 30% over industry standard always. It's very important to us. And the food until 2 a.m. allows us especially with our late night menu to make that revenue from the specific demographic that has always followed us. Like we have a following that's coming here. We're not targeting, nor do we really work with clientele that's been terrorizing this area with the old ownership. So that's why we're so insistent on it. Like that revenue, you know, this is a business after all, and that revenue is critical for the bottom line, especially in the early stages coming down to the 2 a.m., we totally understand and we will earn it and we will see you in the near future and show you that we've earned it and therefore ask for it again. But we urge you to, to consider allowing uh, the middle ground at 2 a.m. on a daily basis, please, for the reasons I've stated. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, well, Thursday may be different, but Monday through Sunday through through Wednesday. I don't see a late night crowd. Um and I, was, I just don't think you'll have a clientele at those hours. David, well, let's not comment on their business operation. I guess no. there's no way there's no way you'll come down on Sunday through Wednesday. 
Um, again, I, I really can't okay. emphasize enough. We have okay. projections and we have right. numbers. And That's fine. Thank you. We understand your position fully. Sorry, I have to ask. It, I like the the pleads of the the community are pretty strong. Okay, y'all. I think we have to write the. I think we have to write the stip set too. Otherwise, we deny. It goes to the SLA. They approve and they give them four. So it's the best we can do. I hope the people from the public who are in attendance recognize the way in which our hands are tied here. I mean, we look defeated, but are we in accordance, committee members? Do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you to the applicants for coming to 2 a.m. I understand that that's like a bit of a shift, but um, we appreciate the flexibility. So, and then the one other thing is we Thank have to much. give an opening by hour. You must open by that time. We don't mind if you open, if you say you open by 11 and you open at 10 in reality, but you need to pick an hour at which you must open by. What hour are you comfortable with? Uh, I believe uh, 10 a.m. As, uh, as what we have stated. Martin, is that, uh, is that correct? Correct. Okay. As long as you're willing to adhere to it, because if you don't open by 10, that's, that becomes the issue. But uh, Absolutely, yes. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Luckily, during all that time, I already transferred the steps. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Thank you again, everyone, for your patience. If I can have the committee's attention, the applicant's attention, and yeah. These are the steps um, for Rafael Kotorski, qualified representative of something short LLC, DBA short stories. At 355 Bowery, the license type is for a full liquor, wine, and beer. They're operating a full service restaurant, uh, serving fusion food with a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation. The hours of operation being opening by 10 a.m. and closing by 2 a.m. all days. Um, they will close all outdoor dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program and any subsequent uses by 10 p.m. Um, no speakers and TVs outside. That's imperative. Um, they will employ a doorman Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't see the harm in that, David. I know it gives off a club vibe, but it's fine. They, oh, I'm so sorry to do this. We didn't talk about soundproofing. Okay, applicants, can you agree that you will install software with the in consultation with the sound engineer? I know your application says that there already is soundproofing that's existing, but this extra measure would go a long way in giving the community more comfort around your situation. Yes, we will get that looked at with the proper sound engineer to get it up to snuff. Much appreciated. Um, you will have a closed fixed facade with no open doors or windows, except um, any entrance door, um, including but not limited to, um, uh, or when Amplified Sound is playing, including but not limited to DJs, live music, live non-musical performances, but you will not have DJs anyway. No live music, no promoted events, no event at which a cover fee is charged, no scheduled performances. I don't, sorry, not to jump around, but you, you say you're gonna host private events, but I don't see that checked in your application. Yeah, that that must have been an error. That's uh, that's one of the main. Okay, can you just tell me how many private parties per month or per year? It doesn't. That won't really change our, our minds here. So whatever you want. Yeah, I, I would say that typically there's uh ten, perhaps twelve on a monthly basis. Twelve per month. Okay, that's fine. I will play ambient background music only. I will not apply for an alteration without coming first to CB3. I'll not change in class until coming to CB3. You will not participate in pub crawls, party buses, no unlimited drink specials, no boozy brunches um, with food. Um, you will have happy hour, but it'll end by 7 p.m. You will not have wait lines outside. You will have staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering, noise, or crowds outside. We've already heard how important that is for the community. You get a conspicuously posted tips next to your liquor license and residents may contact the manager um, at the phone number provided. Oh, that's my area code, 201 925 Does everything look correct to you, applicants? Uh, yeah, yes, it does. Thank you very much. Given that the applicants are ready, David, are you voting or you got a question? No, uh, the 12 per month or private parties, uh, we need to know that that uh, a private party often, you know, music at ambient levels has got to be ironclad here, as well as the soundproofing uh, to the other apartments. Um, this isn't the occasional, you know, uh, you know, wedding reception dinner, uh, 12 per month. You know, it's like every single night of the weekend. 
kind of a thing. Private party, usually parties are loud. Uh, this is a red flag to me, actually. Oh, interesting. Interesting. What number would make you comfortable, David? The, the private party number is really more along the lines of that we are also a hospitality company that does events and we will use our venue space as well to do events. Things that would go along right in line with our business and within our business hours, not going on anything around or above that. So you wouldn't have to worry about it. It's not like we're going to come in and throw a massive 300 person party with DJs and stuff. But I would say if it makes it more easier to palette, call it eight. It's really just a, a number. We do a lot of different events throughout uh, throughout the year all over the country, but I'm not sure exactly how many are going to be in the space exactly. So, you know, it's nothing. There's nothing predetermined to quell anyone. Yeah, I have less pause than David, Amanda, and Sarah. I'm fine with eight. What about you two? I'm happy with eight. Okay, we're gonna make eight. Sorry, David, but thank okay, you. Well, for that's fine. But let's talk about the sound then. This thing about the sound engineer, audible and surrounding apartments means if at all possible, like if, if you can, you need to uh, attempt to get access to residents' apartments, you know, offer it to them and actually work with the sound engineer to make sure that at the loudest possible volume that you would be playing your music, that they can't hear it. Um, I mean, this is going to be very important. I mean, the, the way it's phrased is fine. I think Janez here. That, this is our standard language. So. We're about to agree to it, David. So uh, yeah, but you're, you're absolutely right, David. We're going to get the proper people in here. We want to make sure it's proper. We, we don't want to affect our neighbors. We want everyone to be able to live a normal life. We don't need to be blasting yeah. all the way through the neighborhood. We just want to make sure it's a proper volume for our guests and that doesn't yeah. disturb the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. One, one more thing though, the, um, David, there's I, technology I, to, to restrict the volume that a previous applicant had talked about too, and I can never remember the name of it. Is that possible to install here so that they actually can't go over a certain volume? Um, is it suitable to put that in? Uh, we've never written it in, in STIPS before. I think the requirement to consult with a sound engineer is pretty solid. Okay. The the residents will certainly complain if there's issues. I don't see that. I don't foresee that being an issue. I appreciate David the emphasis on these things, and I, I believe I highlighted them as I was reading them. Applicants, please be aware the sound is the problem. The sound is a problem for the residents surrounding. Please be a good neighbor. Given that, no more changes to the steps. I'm moving this to a vote on the resolution mirroring these steps. David, your vote, please. No. Amanda? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. This motion passes. Applicants and representatives, we will be sending you a copy of the STIPS at some point. Please return them promptly. And if you're not going to sign them, please also let us know promptly. Much appreciated. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Oh, my Atlanta. Okay, folks, we have one left for which I do not have the petition. Sometimes there are not petitions submitted. I've reviewed applications without petitions. It obviously would help the application to have it. But you need it by the Friday before this meeting. So we may review it ahead of time without petitions, but um, they're usually always sent by the Friday before. David, go ahead. Yeah, so the story of petitions is, uh, we, the, the, the SLA is perfectly fine with us saying that they didn't do petitions and we deny this application because of that. But this is very important uh, as, as outreach to let, you know, gives an opportunity for them to engage with their neighbors. Um, in fact, they almost can't do it without doing that. Uh, you know, the public becomes much more aware of the fact it's going in. Anyway, they are important. I'm not sure if you were sort of suggesting in the past we've let it slide. I don't think we, we well, we never have done that. What we have done is, and I'm sorry, I could put my fingers on the language, but maybe you could too. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's only five people left attending. I don't know if there's anyone speaking on behalf of or against so that. The applicant is still in the room. Let me pause for a second. Um, Rajesh, I have sent you the link to what the other people have submitted. I see the petition. I, you just emailed me saying the petition to support is blank. We usually require signatures. You don't absolutely have to go and get them, but it very much supports your case if you've already been out to the community, told them what the hours are going to be, told them what your operation is going to be, give them time to review that. That's what the petition is for. 
I or, understand. I understand now. But uh, when I read, it said that it's not necessarily required. That's why I didn't make that effort to go and get it. Although I would have definitely gone and get it. If that's the only case, I would uh, request I can go and get it. Uh, rest everything is there, as you can see. And uh, you know, if we can uh, go through the the application, and you need that because it said it is not absolutely required. Had it been, I could have requested my landlord, met the tenants. Met I, okay, people. whether or not, I don't know where it is. Maybe if you can send me an email that says it doesn't require, but on the questionnaire, it says the following items are due by noon Friday before the meeting. So we expect that to be there. If you want to proceed without it, our, our resolution will note that. If you want to take the time and go get it, we definitely encourage you to do so. We're happy to let you withdraw for this month and come back. I'm sorry. I'm going to read the language, sir. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is David. David, it's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, no, David, it's, David, David, it's okay. David, if she says, uh, "Well, okay," then I will uh, uh, go and get. Uh, I mean, had I known, I would have definitely done it. You know, uh, since I was not aware of it, then I did not uh, do it. So, uh, but I can, uh, uh, you know, absolutely do it and. Uh, and bring it for the next hearing. That's all I can say, you know. Uh, Appreciate it. I will also apologize for Josh. I'm new and I usually would have caught this if I had like, if I had more time. So I probably would have emailed you and said, hey, we're missing your petition. So that's also on me that I apologize that we don't have it today. I might've emailed you otherwise. I'm not sure what the proper procedure is to withdraw from this meeting and then come back next month. Um, but I will get back to you tomorrow on that. I have your email address now in my email um, and I will make sure that you know, the proper, you have the form, you now you have the form, you can go forth and get it filled out. Um, and if you look at the other examples, people get like, I understand. So the, the only thing that that's why I was getting confused, what is missing, what is missing. So if that's the only thing missing, that's the only thing I would need for my next hearing. Correct. Signatures from some of the neighbors and uh, in support. Correct. Okay, that's fine. Specifically okay. within two blocks and ideally in the building. No, no, definitely. I read that part, but I don't know where I read. I, I mean, otherwise I would have definitely, uh, you know, done that. I, I can, I... Yeah, appreciate your understanding. I totally get it. You didn't totally got it. No problem at all. We hope to see you at our next meeting. I will email you tomorrow and make sure that the proper proceedings are for you to get reviewed at another time and not today. Well, the, 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 okay, that's a follow up, but he needs to state very clearly tonight that he will not go to the SLA without coming back to us at, at a future meeting. For Josh? Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I do understand. I okay. absolutely if, do as understand. long as you say that clearly, then the SLA will yes. hold you to that. So then that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I listen, I've been doing restaurant for 30 years, never denied for a license, never had a single violation for a license. So, and I have done top notch restaurants. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely will go, go by the book. Thank you very much. We appreciate your cooperation. We'll see you at a future meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, team, thank you so much for your patience. I'm so sorry this didn't go faster or smoother or anything. Um, I'd be, yeah. what? You did great. Okay. Yeah, it really, it, it went very well. Don't beat yourself up. This was a um, decent meeting. I mean, it went long, yes, but. We're 16 applications, so. Oh, I was gonna cry. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Um, no, no, don't, because this was a big ass meeting. It was It was your first and, um, but it was long, but not because of you. Good. Okay. Thank you. I do need to like wordsmith a bit of the resolution. So I'm going to do that tonight because I'm going to get the recording right after this. Um, but I will follow up. Thank you all so much. I think we need to do a closing roll. Closing. What is, what is the vote? What is it called, David? Roll call vote. Okay. We're, we're roll call vote to close oh, the roll call. Yeah. Um, Amanda. Yes. David. Yes. Sarah. Yes. The meeting is closed. Thank you all for attending. Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.